Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Captain's Table. I'm your host, Captain Beanard, and the uh, topic of discussion today is, of course, part two of our list of Star Wars movie power rankings, and of course, returning uh, to discuss those things with me uh, to the Captain's Table for the sixth time, we have Mitchellonius. How's everybody doing? Good, good. And good, good. returning for the fifth time, Johnny Reps. Are we official members of the channel yet? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Yes, you guys are, as I mentioned last time, my uh, not-so-expert panel of movie critics officially. And, um, of course, the decision was made last time we were uh, broadcasting, uh, since we were running late again, as we tend to do, um, to go ahead and split the show up into two segments once again. So uh, last time we covered numbers 10 through 6 on the list. This time we'll be covering numbers five to one. So uh, same rules apply as we talked about before. Uh, we made our own lists ranking uh, all of the uh, Star Wars movies from worst to first, and um, we're in the top half of the list now. So um, we're just going to jump right back into it here with uh, number five. And coming in at number five, we have uh, episode seven, The Force Awakens. And uh, this was, of course, the um, first movie of the, the one new trilogy. Was, playing, was that the one where Tom Hardy was playing Picard's clone? Oh wait, wrong, wrong, uh, uh, wrong okay. franchise and wrong everything. So no, it wasn't that yeah. one. But, um, but yeah, so this was um, the first of the uh, new trilogy of Star Wars movie under the uh, Disney banner, of course, and. Um, I'll start off by uh, saying that I did actually really enjoy this movie, honestly. Um, I thought that it was very well put together. Um, it had good action sequences, fight sequences. Uh, the story and plot was good, too. Uh, the characters were good. Just it was, a, it was a very solid movie overall that kind of uh, brought new life back to the Star Wars franchise. So um, I did really enjoy this movie on a lot of levels. Um, my biggest criticism of the movie, which is probably a one that we all have and most people have of it, is that uh, this movie was more or less a carbon copy of A New Hope. Um, as far as pretty much everything that happens in it, pretty much every character, every plot point, every just about everything that happens in this movie, a comparison can be drawn back to um, A New Hope. And that is actually a pretty big problem for me when ranking this movie, um, just because of the fact that, as we all mentioned before, we all kind of really do appreciate originality um, and uh, uniqueness in our movies and our stories and our characters. And uh, never before in the Star Wars franchise have we ever seen uh, something so blatantly copy something else than we did uh, in this movie, um, but I want to throw it over to you, John, for more on uh, The Force Awakens. So, I feel like Force Awakens has was made worse by The Last Jedi. Like, The Force Awakens on its own, I actually liked it considerably bit more until The Last Jedi came out, and I think you know why, right? Because right. all of the things that they set up in Force Awakens ended up being irrelevant or pointless or just plain not answered in Last Jedi, or they were either put, or you know, it just didn't make sense. So right. that's one big problem that I have with the movie. But if we're speaking about the movie itself in isolation, like without even considering the fact that it is um, very closely, almost not like a rehash, but it, it goes beat for beat, very similar to A New Hope, which I don't know how intentional that was. And I feel like J.J. Abrams probably thought he was doing that to some extent, but he may have not realized just how blatant it was in some circumstances. You know what I mean? Definitely. Um, yeah. And I think he was, he kind of was probably doing it thinking more like, oh yeah, look, I'm inspired by, you know, A New Hope. And uh, Yeah, but it went, it went really far beyond that, honestly. And I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even fully grasp that like the first time I watched this movie I had to watch it kind of a second and even a third time to kind of realize hey like just take the opening scene for the in the movie for example which is a really good opening scene honestly but just think about what happens here you have the bad it's guy. The same thing as Darth Vader showing up on uh, Leia's ship. It's exactly. Like yeah, it's the same thing. Kylo Ren showing up at that planet, killing everybody, and then searching for a stolen schematic or map or plan of some sort stashed in some sort of robot that the good guy put there after the good guy was taken prisoner by the bad guy. You know, like it's it's the outline of the scene is identical to the opening scene of A New Hope. Yeah. I mean, but the thing is, I feel like looking at. La uh, 
Force Awakens in a uh, one of the things that I think about the movie is that if if Last Jedi had been like a killer follow up and it had answered like all the unanswered questions that Force Awakens kind of set up, I think Force Awakens may be remembered better. You know what I mean? I feel oh, like it's yeah, because, I, I 100% um, agree Empire with you because so Empire Strikes Back worked so well as a follow up to New Hope. A New Hope is like almost remembered better. Not to say that a New Hope is not a great movie on its own. But I feel like it's almost remembered better because of the fact that Empire just kind of followed up on everything and expanded the universe in such a logical way. Whereas, like, like think about this. If after A New Hope, if instead of uh, the Empire, like, expanding on the lore of the Jedi and, like, bringing a part about, like, you know, Obi-Wan is a Force ghost now and introducing this new great character of Yoda, like, Yoda had turned, like, imagine, like, imagine that beat for beat, Last Jedi and Empire Strikes Back were similar. Uh, <laughs> Last uh, Empire Strikes Back had done what Last Jedi had done. I like, think that would have just how like much ruined the franchise. Fondly. To be honest yeah, with you, like less, at that point, how much less, yeah, exactly. How much less fondly a New Hope would have been remembered? Like, yeah. I don't think Last Jedi was a. a I, or sorry, I don't think uh, Force Awakens was a bad movie. I actually think it's a good movie. I just think that it's its biggest, most glaring weakness is that it kind of like tried to lean on nostalgia too much, which in a way made it a, a good movie for some, uh, it made it a good like comeback movie for Star Wars, but right. like looking at it like in retrospect makes it not necessarily the best movie. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with those points, but uh, Mitch, you've been pretty quiet. So I'm interested to hear your take on the uh, force awakens, if you would. Well, uh, you know, with force awakens, I just, I, uh... Watching the movie, I mean, and and any Star Wars movie, you know, you're always hoping for that, that 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 lightsaber battle, that lightsaber scene, and you know, because lightsabers is kind of what, in my opinion, at least, what what has always drawn me beyond That's anything else factor. with Star Wars is like, holy shit, you know, it's it's, you know, and and I, I felt like the movie was so much, and you know, it, it followed so much in depth to like finding that or that quote-unquote original saber which was uh, if i remember correctly because again it's been a long time since i've seen this movie but was uh anakin's anakin's original uh, before saber. he was darth vader his, his first you know his, 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 his the, the lightsaber he built um yes you know and it, it was in you know what some chest somewhere in some fucking hut somewhere fucking yeah it was in maz's where, castle yeah <laughs> yeah i i just you know what really let me down for this movie was that I was really kind of looking forward to when I hear a movie like the force awakens and I'm thinking, you know, and when they show in the previews, I believe, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the preview they showed, you know, in force awakens, uh, some of a uh, Luke Skywalker, which essentially was yeah, the ending was to the problem. movie, yeah, which was yep. you know, all you literally got of out of Luke Skywalker was, uh, Ray, like <laughs> literally, like walking up to Luke Skywalker and handing him the saber, and and if I remember correctly, he just kind of like tossed it aside. Like that's actually the like beginning of um, that's actually the beginning well, of um of the Last Jedi. The end the yeah. end of um the Force Awakens is where she confronts him, and then the beginning of the Last Jedi is where he takes the saber and throws it off a cliff, basically. I feel like yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I don't mean, I don't mean again because Last Jedi, like 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 John said, it, you know, it kind of ties into it, but at the same time, yeah. like I feel like when you have a whole movie based upon like finding this and kind of getting the concept that, you know, the Ray is, is a Jedi in some way, shape or form, or the force flows through her strongly. And, you know, but then at the same time you have this stormtrooper that, that, you know, during a massacre on a planet kind of, you know, has, what they're not supposed to have, which is like their own thoughts mm -hmm. on what's going on and, and, and right. kind of backpedals and like drops off and is like, Hey, I, I don't, I don't agree with this. And then, you know, helps with the process of, of, of finding, you know, this lightsaber. I don't know. I kind of felt like the force awakens kind of, it was too much time spent on the actual point of what everybody was trying to, to receive. Um, it, again, a standalone was not a bad movie. You know, it, it was a great movie, but I made it work. Yeah, but it's, but been, yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, I think you're both the last that the I definitely, thing, yeah. yeah, no, the last that I did make it worse, but like, like, but again, this movie came out 
prior to it. So yeah. on its own, yes, it was a great, it, it, you know, it was a great movie. But at the same time, the most disappointing factor for me for this movie, because I don't want to spend too much time on on this particular one. Right. But the the most disappointing factor was like the whole time I'm watching this, I'm I'm waiting for Luke's entrance because yep. you you figure you know, he's going to be a part in some way, shape or form of this movie. And the only part he really played was like the last, what, like three minutes, not even, you know, and, and then, and then it, and then it just ended and it's like, okay, well, why did you make me wait all this time for that? Yeah, um, and I a hundred percent agree you know, with you there, and that's something that I actually have, um, you know, I had uh, glossed over in my initial analysis of the movie. But I remember now that you you know bring it up, I do remember feeling that exact same way watching this movie, like watching it just th- like the anticipation of like, where's Luke Skywalker? Where's Luke Skywalker? I want to see Luke Skywalker. I haven't seen Luke Skywalker in a movie since 1983, which was before I was born, you know? So like, you know, it's before all of us were born. So it's like, I want to see Luke, Luke Skywalker again. That's what a lot of people wanted, I think. And then when you have to wait till the last 30 seconds of the movie to see him, and then that's the end of the movie. He just turns around. It's like that, that's kind of like a, uh, like, yeah, I get you're teasing me towards the future and that's okay to an extent but i feel like i do feel like that was kind of a mistake in this movie to be honest with with you is kind of like making him like not an actual part of this movie even though it was kind of like that's what the fans wanted is they wanted the trio of uh luke han and leia reunited on the big screen and and they didn't really deliver on that yeah. Well, that's because that's what you think when you hear The Force Awakens. You know, you, you think of the originals, you think of Luke, Han, and Leia, but at the same time, you know, it, 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 like you said, it just, you know, where's Luke Skywalker? Where, where, where is he? And then all of a sudden, like you said, the, like the literal last 30 seconds of this movie is when you see him. And, I mean, I that that's kind of what, it's a letdown. Not it's a little bit ruined of a letdown. it for me, but it kind of it was a letdown, and I'm thinking, okay, well, the next movie where he's in, it'll be it'll be fucking awesome. And then you had the last. <laughs> I was gonna say, and and then, that's where it fell short. And then it wasn't. Yep. It kind of seems like what I think is I, I, we're all talking about a lot of negatives about the Force Awakens, but it obviously has some positives because we didn't rank it like it's like near the middle. It's right in the middle, pretty much. Oh yeah. So I just want to talk about some positives I thought about the movie. The first thing sure. is I want to say that I think uh, Harrison Ford killed it because he's always hilarious. One hundred percent. Although his in this movie, although his part in this movie was a mirror image of uh, Obi Wan's part in uh, you know in uh, New Hope, but yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> Alec, Alec Guinness was also uh, brilliant in that movie. So, very, but, but, very and true. Despite they both kind of didn't really want to be there but still um, (laughs) i feel like ironically uh, i feel like legitimately when kylo ren debuted i thought his like actual like first scene was awesome but then they kind of like fucked up the character a little bit but in a way like i really mixed feelings about kylo ren as a character because i feel like they did a pretty good job of making him like a like you know a well-developed he's like pretty much the only character that after last jedi that i still like of the yeah. new ones because well, he's like, like the he only character movies. that they didn't really ruin in some really obvious way and after the last I mean, they jedi. Did kind of ruined him a little a little bit but in a way they just made they made his character like kind of like deeper and more nuanced which is yeah. okay but like uh i feel like his his opening scene was freaking awesome i feel like the humor in the movie like hit very one of the good things about it is i feel like the humor was unlike last jedi i feel like the humor was well placed and it tended to work yep. um the story was you know again a kind of a rehash of a new hope but at Still the same time though. it's just that, like the, the set pieces and the it was it had a logical progression the set pieces and the way everything were designed the battles were good mm-hmm. uh you know, the lightsaber fight at the end was kind of lackluster, and the whole thing about Ray beating Kylo was kind of stupid and didn't make sense. And it makes <laughs> yeah. sense. To, an, to an extent, yeah, you can. I mean, there's there's arguments we can make for that because, like, you know, it, it doesn't. Well, it to an extent, it makes a little bit of sense because Kylo was wounded going into the fight, but at the same time, well, like, you know, Ray, like that whole the whole chemistry with Ray and Kylo, because like in this movie, it's like you don't know the whole time. It's like you don't know who Ray is, you don't know who Ray is, but you know she has some history. You know there's something there with her. There, you know that it seems that she's had prior training or prior experience with the Force again, that she doesn't remember. 
and then it's another it, example of like Last Jedi kind of fucking up a setup that yeah. Force Awakens. <laughs> yes, Force definitely. Awakens, Force Awakens was kind of like a ton of like who done and Last Jedi was just a ton of like it doesn't matter or there's no answer. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, like, who's Ray's parent? That was the biggest question after the Force Awakens. Um, was with Ray was who Ray's parents? Who Ray's parents is? And the big theories were she had to be either the she had to be Kylo's brother, which would have made her uh, Han and Leia's daughter, or she would have had to be Luke's daughter, which would beg the question of who would the mother be? Um, but it's like you said in the Last Jedi. Then not to spend too much time on the Last Jedi because we all talked about that in length last time. But it's like. The Last Jedi killed that plot point because it's like, oh, who are her parents? Nobody. It doesn't matter. You know, even though that was such a big yeah, deal I, in The Force Awakens. I think we should, we should focus more for the rest of it kind of on Force Awakens on its own. Yeah, the one thing I want to say uh, to, about a point that you brought up with Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens is I liked his character a lot in The Force Awakens, even though, like you said, toward the end they kind of derailed him a little. The one thing that I think they could have done to preserve his character in this movie is I think they had him take his helmet off off way too soon. I was just going to say that. Yep. Yes, he, they, he should have only he taken his helmet off at the end with Han Solo. That should have been the only time yeah. that he took his helmet off, not for Ray like yeah. halfway through the movie. Because that was how great after he took his helmet off, at, at, after his helmet was removed, like his you didn't see him as, as yeah, as menacing and and as much of a threat like you're like, it's oh, almost he's just like, a whiny like I believe little kid. Even, I think I think Bernard, you even, yeah, that was what you had said to me was like after the movie had been seen, we we and we talked about it. You 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 know, you stressed the point where when you when you saw Kylo Ren for in that vulnerable, and I won't even go as far as vulnerable, but just the fact that he wasn't that menacing. You know, it's almost like if Darth Vader walked around. With just his body suit, yeah, not and the his head off, and not the mask and, and, on. You know, he seems like he like decrepit, his pale, decrepit face. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Like, like how much it, would it, that have but, taken but it was away the from the character? Opposite. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you saw somebody that was like, oh my god, this is a fucking kid. Like, yeah. so if like, but I feel like if, if he would have, would have, if he would have left, yes. That would have been like right when he thing. saw Han Solo. Like right when he was about to kill Han Solo, like he takes his mask off and you think, "Oh man, he's just a scared kid." But then he like kills yeah. him right there, and he's like, you see the darkness in his eyes. That would have been way better than what they did. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And and one hundred percent agree. With, but that's the thing with timing, though, is the fact that like with 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 timing in in um, Return of the Jedi, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, um, the fact that they time that right, literally right at the end of the movie, right at the end of Vader's life, that they take his mask off, and you see this this evil man who's been reigning terror on the galaxy for decades now is just this, you know disfigured decrepit old man you know that's that's all he is beneath and you know suit. but and i feel like i feel like the comparison between vader and kylo ren because if i remember correctly too like kylo was like worshiping the warped melted mask of like yes. Darth yeah. Vader. Yeah, his his but, ideology but is, time, is on the, along the lines I, I, of that. He, like... he idolizes the evil within darth vader and yes the, you know but 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 within. At the same time, Darth Vader also he, he he was a much deeper, at least the way that Star Wars created it w w was a much, in my opinion, and, and you know, and keep in mind, like I've seen, I, I you know, I, I've read some books, right. I've seen some of the comics, and, and I mean, and as far as you know, Darth Vader goes, he he's a much deeper character oh, than course. than That's what the Kylo was in, created in the to be. Universe. Yes. An experience, yeah. universe. but I would argue in the originals, Darth Vader wasn't he wasn't really that nuanced or that like deep in the originals, but he didn't really need to be. And then they kind of expanded on him later on. I feel like what they did with Kylo is they kind of took him a little bit in the wrong direction in a way that like instead of making him seem like a really like conflicted like guy, like a, just who's just kind of like a kid, but he's also kind of like conflicted and he's like he has good and evil in him. They kind of just made him seem like a whiny baby in a lot of ways, throwing temper tantrums. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's that's how yeah, they kind exactly. of derailed his like, character like, toward the end of the movie. I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, and, and I mean, I mean, but I mean, but you got to figure, you got to figure, Kylo based, you know, his whole image off of off of the evilness, and and, and, and I mean, because the reality is, Vader had to wear his suit, he had to wear his mask, he had to had to wear all that as to where Kylo chose to, mm -hmm. and and. 
Exactly. He was a co- you yeah. know, he was a copycat. He was a cosplayer. He yeah. he was like, you know what? Well, he did this, so I'm gonna do that. And and but the reality is Vader didn't didn't have a choice. But the one thing that we all forget is that um Vader, you know, he wasn't stupid either. He 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 wore his suit and he knew that intentionally by Darth Sidious the suit was created so that he was weak to force lightning and and he mm. you know he had these vulnerabilities and that in the in the end was his downfall but vader's logic to it was the pain makes me stronger i think that's kylo I, that's kind of what, when he, what i when, think when kylo he, was trying to do at the end of the movie where he was trying when to when like, he killed han solo yeah well, like, like he, he was looking for that and, pain uh, right well not only that, that made that, him but... stronger but at the same time his father wasn't wasn't in an aggressive state like yeah, I, I personally think the reason the movie took the turn it did and why it didn't happen the way it happened was because when they when they said, "Hey, Harrison Ford, we need you to be Han Solo again," and he was like, "Okay, okay, well, but kill so me. here <laughs> is my stipulation: yes. you need to end me in this movie. Like, you need yeah. you need to finally kill me." Yep, he's like, "Kill and, me before I die for real." Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the thing, the, the yeah. thing that I think, well, but the but the, what I was talking about at the end of this movie was more of the point of like uh, when uh, Chewbacca, after he kills Han Solo, and then Chewbacca shoots him and he's wounded. How he's like punching himself in his wound to try and like psych himself up and like channel the pain, like in his fight at the end with Ray. Um, you know, like, that's... how cool would it have been if like instead of like when Chewbacca shoots him with the bowcaster, like he just catches the bolt in the air with the with the lightning and then he like goes on to like destroy everybody and almost kill them, but then they somehow get away by some like miraculous plot armor. That right? would have been that, that would have made him look like way that would have made him look way more dangerous. Because you know he caught yeah, the... the blaster bolt in the beginning of the movie, right? Like why yes. couldn't he do that? Well at the end of there. the yeah, I think I think at the end to explain that, I think at the end he was kind of distracted by the fact that he just killed Han Solo and he wasn't like expecting <laughs> I, I, I just want to say, I, I legitimately feel like one of the reasons why I have this movie ranked pretty good, even though there's obviously a ton of problems that we're talking about, is I just sure. feel like Kylo's like initial, the initial scene where Kylo came in was just like so good and it was so oh, well yeah. done. And they just kind of like the, where he caught the blaster bolt. Like I was like, when I saw that, I was like, holy shit, this guy is like stronger than like freaking Darth Sidious. This guy's like going to be the biggest bad guy of all time right like he, yep. no one's ever caught a blaster bolt in the air right right like I've, you've never seen it maybe in the expanded universe but you've never seen anybody do that like on screen and then right? and then and then come the end of the movie he gets shot by one well, he gets shot by yeah. Chewbacca, you know, and then he yeah. gets uh, he gets I mean, owned by he gets owned it. by Ray, which is which really depreciated yeah, the value the of his character. Yeah, someone who has had no training like that we've seen, someone who who literally found a saber and decides to use it, and in my opinion, she wasn't using it out of like the light side of the force. Like she was pissed, yeah, she was yeah. angry, you know, you know, and, and, and she was fighting him, and that's the dark side, yeah. and it was causing her to be able to because he was injured in a way, beat him, and regardless to whether, oh, well, his saber was an unstable type of saber, which could only lead to the fact that who his master is, you know, none of that matters. The fact is, he was trained by Luke. He was betrayed by Luke. He, he, he became probably- this, this character. He was a prodigy, just like Anakin, and yet he was beaten and overtaken yeah, by somebody who's had no clear training in any of that and it was like holy shit yeah and going going back to what we were talking about earlier i think that's that's the kind of thing where this movie ties in with the last jedi where it's like that was a plot point that we were all expecting to be explained later was like how was ray able to defeat kylo in that fight at the end of this movie which was good but you know like i said it didn't make a lot of sense with the information we were given in this movie and then in the last the fact that the last jedi was just like oh well we're still not going to answer the question because it doesn't matter and it's like well yes of course it fucking matters, well, you know? I feel like they, they, they make you want to draw your own conclusion in the sense where, oh, well, he was injured. Like, yeah. that doesn't matter because the fact is uh, the dark side, it, it, it's pain, it's turmoil. When you brought up the point of how he tried to continue to hurt himself through his wound to strengthen himself, that should have only been able to make him overpower whatever was standing in his way, and it didn't. Yeah. You know, it, it just didn't matter. So that that's, you know, I feel like, we, I, f- I honestly feel like, John, go ahead, say your point after I'm done here, but I, I feel like we've spent 
a decent amount of time on the force awakens as far as like yeah, the that- good and the bad yeah. it was a good movie by itself did the last jedi knock it down potentially yes but at the same time it had its good points its bad points its confusing points it, it kind of seems like it fits into the category where it needs to be in the middle because it, yeah. it, it was good and bad, but the, the other movies kind of eh, made it not make so much sense in, 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 a, in a true fan's eyes. You know? I would say on its, own, on its own, The Force Awakens had like a lot of – it was a very up-and-down movie, and I want to say like – looking at it in like at the time it came out i really liked it just because it has like it has, it's a very star warsy movie and that's because of all the it obviously plays toward people's nostalgia but i feel like looking back on it the movie is probably like the star wars movie that i kind of have the most conf- like i know i don't like the last jedi right but like it's probably the one that i have the most conflicting feelings on of like whether or not i really because like sometimes i think about the force awakens and i think about when i first saw it and i had this amazing feeling of star wars is back and like the really cool scenes of like the kylo ren scene or like when chan and chewie show up again or like you know when han actually gets to see leia for the first time in like however freaking long like Mm -hmm. i think of like those scenes and they make me really happy and think the movie's great but then other times i think about like how they botched kylo ren's character and like how ray is just like terrible even in that movie (laughs) she's just like so like not her character just makes no sense and like so it just has so many conflicting i guess that'll just be my final word on the movie is it just very conflicted this movie is Gotcha. Or very conflicted my feelings about this movie are. Yeah, and I tend to agree with you guys more or less. I think that um, I, I did like a lot of things they did in this movie. I liked um, you know, I liked Finn because I thought his his story was pretty interesting. You know how he you know he came from being a stormtrooper and then you know kind of turned and all we that. Even even, even though Finn. points about another that, ruined character. Yeah, another even though certain, character certain in things about situation. that whole arc didn't make sense, but yeah, I thought sorry, it was sure. Um, but yeah, certain things about it didn't necessarily make sense, but it was still interesting. And, you know, pretty much everything you, you guys... You had potential some good one-liners. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I think, you know, pretty much everything you guys said about this movie, I would agree with. And that's, I think, kind of why it uh, ranks where it does on our list here. So, um, but I think that wraps that up pretty well. So we're going to keep moving along then uh, with number four. And coming in at number four, we have episode three, Revenge of the Sith. And uh, this was, of course, the final installment of the prequel trilogy. And, um, I'll start things off again with this one here. Um, Hello there. This was, yes, um, this was this was a really good movie in my opinion, despite the fact that uh, it does get uh, some mixed reviews from a lot of uh, different sources, especially right. uh, so, online critics. Um, I have to reply to that immediately before you say anything. I mean, let's just say this. It's really good compared to what came before it. Sure. But is it really that good? <laughs> well, I would answer that by saying yes. I do, in fact, think that th- this movie is really good compared to what uh, came before it, yes. And I think maybe that's part of the reason why I, I look personally a little more fondly on this movie is the fact that, you know, when you look at what this movie was versus what the uh, first two movies in the prequel trilogy are, there's no comparison. It blows them out of the water. But more so than that, I give this movie a lot of credit and I rank it um, as high on this list as we do um, for a couple other reasons too and a big one for me um, is the fact that I feel like overall this movie is kind of um, the personification of doing the best you can with what you have to work with or at least close to the best you can with what you have to work with because let's face it um, this movie was actually put in a very tough and very awkward situation in the Star Wars universe because going into this movie, you had had the two prequel movies that were complete failures, more or less. Um, yes, they had some some decent you know moments and points to them, but all in all, the first two movies in the prequel trilogy are pretty universally uh, considered not good. So you have that. And then on top of that, you have the fact that because this movie is the final installment, that now you have uh, you have to basically put everything um, right as far as to make sense with the original trilogy of movies, which occurs after this in the timeline. So just think about this for a second. This is something I've thought about a lot when determining my uh, ranking of this movie. Think about where the Star Wars universe is left at the end of Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and where the Star Wars universe begins in Episode 4, A New Hope. 
and think about the massive, massive, massive gap that this movie had to bridge between those two movies. Because at the end of this of Attack of the Clones, everybody's young, everything's good. The war is lit- the Clone War is just starting at the end of that movie. Uh, Anakin's still good. He's getting married to Padme. You know, all the Jedi are still alive. Nobody knows who Darth Sidious is. Luke isn't even born. Leia isn't even born. And then compare that to the beginning of A New Hope where all the Jedi are dead, the Empire's in full swing, um, you know, Luke is already, you know, a grown man, so Leia's a grown woman, you know, all that stuff. So there is so much ground that this movie had to cover that I have to give it a lot of credit that it still, despite having so many factors working against it, that it still ended up being a good movie, in my opinion. Um, it had, so. having said that, I will say a couple more things, and I'll turn it over to you guys. Um, a couple other things that stick out to me as far as this movie goes um, are the fact that um, it had really good action in this movie. Uh, arguably, in my opinion, uh, the best lightsaber duel of any Star Wars movie ever with uh, Obi-Wan versus Anakin at the end. Um Really good storytelling, in my opinion, too. Good plot points, good story progression, um, a lot of those things. And again, um, like I said, this movie had so much ground to cover due to the fact that uh, there was little to no ground covered in the first two prequel movies as far as character developments and plot you know, uh, progression and all that stuff. Um, so I think this movie did do a good job of all that. Yes, there were inconsistencies in this movie. There were things that didn't make sense. Um, there were, there were some things that could have been done better. Uh, but all in all, I do, uh, enjoy this movie, uh, quite well, but, uh, I'll throw it over to you, Mitch, uh, for more. Cause I know that, uh, you're a pretty big fan of this movie as well. Yeah. Listen, uh, I actually, and, and, Fans may cringe when I say this, but I enjoyed this movie more than any other Star Wars movie, aside from Empire, obviously, because it doesn't get better than that. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, (laughs) here's the thing. I mean, it's the creation of the most sinister slash hopeful character ever in Star Wars. It, It is the creation of what Darth Vader was prior to being himself and Anakin. It was the crossover. And, and, and I think my biggest problem was that they didn't take enough time to actually, I mean, listen, the actor that they had play Anakin Skywalker as as uh, I don't know, what would you call him? A, a young adult or a uh, sure, yeah, you know. But regardless, I mean, good old Hayden Christensen. <laughs> Hayden Christensen. He just not the best. The part. lackluster emotion that he he he. And that was the other thing. The I, role I, I, the last, that was the other only, thing I wanted to mention. Yeah, is that his, his yeah, acting it, was it, actually it, tolerable it, tolerable in this movie as opposed to but in but uh, the still corner. wasn't but enough. It still wasn't good. It still wasn't, but still good. wasn't enough. No, not at all. Because, you know, even in in the fight you brought up with, with, you know, towards the end when when it was between, well, you know, I have the high ground. And he's like, don't don't underestimate my power. Like, there's no emotion. There's no true feeling there, in my opinion, at least from what I saw. And and I feel like, I feel like a true, you know... Um, prodigy to the force, a, a true, you know, because not to bring up the expanded universe again, but you know, Anakin Skywalker was created by, I do believe it was Darth Plagueis who was able to manipulate the force and actually cause. It was either that's Plagueis why. Or oh, his Metaclorian count. It wasn't Sidious. I know that for sure. Okay. It was either Snoke or it was Plagueis. But it was, it was you know, I it, it was, I, yeah, I wasn't positive on that. But yeah, someone I, I agree. Was, yeah, that happened. Is I that they explained? You know, it. And, and 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 the fact that a character was solely created by another dark Jedi to <laughs> to like 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 be the destruction of that dogmatic order, like just the lack of. It was just lackluster in his acting, but I feel like the story was just so good. Like, 
like you said, the way that he went down, the way you saw his limbs come off. And, and we all know being fans of star Wars, you know, the force that is within your body, he lost a lot of force ability and power when he lost his limbs. When, when, when he had to, essentially he was the core of the, you know, cybernetic being that was Darth Vader, which the suit he decided to keep on himself, knowing that it was created, you know, tilted to cause him pain. Mm -hmm. He decided that pain makes me stronger, even though knowing because the rule of the Sith is there can only be two. And he could have killed Darth Sidious at any time but was weak to force lightning. He could have changed his his suit to to fit him perfectly to where that he could be at 100% and, and, and be what he was destined to be, but chose not to. I, I, I mean, it, it, it's from beginning to end when, you know, he, he just, you saw the turmoil that was Anakin. You saw... He tried and he tried. He tried to bring things to the order. He, tr but they were just so dogmatic in what they did that it didn't matter. And then when, you know, the only person he felt like he could go to was was Obi Wan, and Obi Wan still sided with, you know, the order, and he decided to take things into his own hands, and that's kind of what drew him to where he was. Murder some and, young Yeah, murder. Yeah, but you know, at the same time. I can see the justification in what he did as far not I, I you know let me amend that <laughs> not justification because there's there's you none can, of that you can but, see why he did what he did in the story like but it, it I can did see make why a, he did what he did because he even took the woman that he loved the most the when he saw Obi Wan mm -hmm. and 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 force choked her while she was pregnant with his chin his twin children mm -hmm. to the point where she could have either a died or lost them. And and oh, in his yeah. mind, it was you know Obi Wan's fault. Like like she betrayed him in some way. Like that that's my whole point. There was so much depth to this story that I feel like the actor that they put in place to 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 show that depth just didn't meet the mark. And oh, no, you'll never get an that argument is there why, from anybody. Yeah, no, that's that's a hundred percent. That that is why you know the movie sits where it sits for me because honestly. I feel like that's kind of what all the fans wanted was they just wanted a good actor to Darth play Vader Darth Vader. Darth yeah. Vader. Like you want you wanted you know, a good and, actor to play Darth Vader and that's the funny thing is like isn't the Sith's whole thing supposed to be like passion and stuff and then like you yeah, know he's the, like dead inside. Yeah, and 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 then you have Hayden Christensen who has like the personality of a boiled potato and it's like and again the sad thing is is like his acting in this movie was actually tolerable unlike his acting in Attack of the Clones but still you but know But it was it, only tolerable it, to the extent of right. of the Attack of the Clones like, yeah. like he he needed to bring more to the table for this because yeah. and, and he didn't. They chose he needed the wrong. To bring they more chose to the, the wrong. I think that we can all agree this is probably one of the most infamous uh, casting mishaps of like any major franchise of movies uh, was putting him in that role. Um, but no, I definitely get your point there. Um, I also get your point but before how the, you were saying how the uh, the whole movie, one of the downfalls of the movie was it feeling kind of rushed in, in what it was, and unfortunately I think that's more of a byproduct of the fact that, like I said in the first uh, two prequel movies, we had little to no like storyline progression, character development that was meaningful, so this movie had had to rush everything, you know, which was and, a downfall, and, and, but... And I and I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna you know pull this movie out because obviously the next couple we have to talk about are are, are undisputably ones. the greatest Star Wars movies created because they were the first. But here's the thing: three of the greatest movies ever. Yeah. That that infamous. <laughs> oh, that was bad. <laughs> like. Uh... Let me let me just explain two parts of this. First off, in the movie, the way they explained it, the way they showed it, he broke everything around him. Now, in the expanded universe, in the actual books, he said yeah, he was choking. <laughs> no, he didn't say yeah. He was choking Darth Sidious in that moment. Yeah, choking his chicken. No, without even knowing it, like he had expelled so much energy 
and semen, which was minimal to him, yeah. but maximal to Darcidius that he could have actually killed him there. Right. And the only reason that he didn't was because he had lost Obi Wan. He had lost all of his connection to the good side, the light side of the Force, and Darth Sidious was all he had left as far as connection and family and 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 someone to lean on goes yep. and you know the sith rule of two he actually made the conscious decision to not kill him in the expanded universe and and yeah, they didn't really go over that, that at all in the uh, in the other mo- in the movie probably because of lack of time but exactly because like you said it was rushed but they didn't go over that at all darth Sidious stood there with a smile on his face yeah, he literally was choking. Like Darth Sidious fell to his knees mm-hmm. in that moment when he told him that, "Oh, you killed Padme, and you did, did it, and it was all you." Like in that moment, he was killing his master without even knowing. And even when he realized, that's when he made the conscious decision to stop and and, and to just kind of pull it back in and. And I think I think any any Sith that leaves himself vulnerable, there's a reason for it because the whole time and obviously you know the other movies when when Luke is more prevalent and Luke is who Luke is, you know he sees that goodness in him and and who knows maybe he had the foresight to see what was to come. Who knows? No one knows. But at the same time, like I said, I, I just think that the actor was what was lackluster. the The story was uh, incredible. the The fight sequences were incredible. You know, seeing Darth Vader being literally created after his body being dismembered and burned, and the 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 cybernetics being attached to him. But what ruined that even was that that no like like it just it just yeah that, that definitely <sighs> detracted know. from that moment a lot but but uh, we've been talking about this a lot uh, John I'm interested to hear your take I, on yeah, this I movie say, I didn't get to say like I haven't been able to say a full thing but I wanted to I know I've been interrupting a lot but I haven't gotten my full piece <laughs> go but for it my my opinion on the movie is I kind of agree with what Mitch is saying but in a lot of ways I also disagree with what he's saying like I I feel like it's un it's pretty much not debatable that Hayden Christensen was not the right choice for this role, like at all, but they were pretty much stuck with him, right? They're not going to recast after, you know, after the previous episode, they're not going to recast him again, unless they would move so far forward that it was it, like, it just they would take so much flack for recasting him rather than just like trying to, you know, get him to coax a good performance out of him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be hilarious well, actually. Can... Now that you just, I don't mean to derail you, but um, I just realized how funny would that have been if you have little boy playing Anakin in the first movie and then Natalie Portman playing Padme. And then in the second movie, Hayden Christensen playing Anakin and Natalie Portman still playing Padme. And then in the third movie, some older guy playing Anakin, but Natalie Portman still playing Padme. <laughs> yeah. They could have got like, uh, <laughs> Who could, who could they have casted? How about Edward Norton? <laughs> I, I don't know. You know I, I think honestly, there's a lot of actors that, that could have done better. He, he, he's played some serious... I, I, honestly, I think it, they could have casted fucking Samuel L. Jackson and he could have <laughs> motherfucked the whole fucking movie. <laughs> they could have turned Darth Vader fucking black. And it would have like, been, been really been better. When he was in the suit, he just turned really white because he wasn't exposed to sun for so long. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. He, he had he had what Michael Jackson had, you know that yeah, the skin that disease. shit apparently that fucking yeah. turns you fucking backwards. Like, I think it's it's pretty much it's universally like, acknowledged. They could have just about anybody would have been a better choice than uh, Hayden Christensen, but um, but, but I do get John's point thing. where you know he makes the point of like they were stuck if they them. did that, how much shit would yeah. they have taught for that? Yeah, exactly. We're stuck yeah. with this guy, so. Let's make the best out of shit. You know, let's polish. We gotta let's polish shit. The they, best they, we can, they better have. You know? po- I can't imagine how much money they spent on getting him acting lessons for that movie. But anyway, go, John, continue. I was gonna say, as Stone Cold Steve Austin says, they got to turn chicken shit into chicken salad. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I, I kind of disagree with Mitch in a way, while still simultaneously agreeing with him. Where I say that, okay, 
however they did the Vader origin story, I feel like to me, especially with the poor setup that was given by the previous two movies, I was, I think pretty much everybody was going to come out of it slightly disappointed, right? Mm. Because of the fact that the previous movies just, they kind of shit the bed and then this movie had to like not only clean the bed but also like make it make it again you know what i mean yeah like uh, I, that that goes and, back to what i was saying that this movie had a lot of a lot of shit that it had to do in this movie it had a lot it had a lot to do and at the same time it's like okay hayden christensen acting sucks that's a given but like i just don't when mitch said the story was incredible i just don't agree with that and i don't agree with the fact that the story was i don't feel like the execution or the writing of the story was incredible yeah i understand when you take into consideration all the expanded universe stuff that you i could see how you think that everything once you put that all together it makes for an incredible story but just from what was presented in this movie i would not agree that it was an incredible story i would say the story in this movie worked in some respects i would say it kind of fell flat on its face in other respects like how we were talking about the uh, him killing the younglings, right? That was like such a huge jump in his character that it just seems super illogical, right? Like he was one second he was just disagreeing with Obi Wan, and the next second he's slaughtering a bunch of kids just because Sidious told him, to, right? Yep. It just like that just seemed to me like that was just like such a it was it was a uh, well I think that's it, it that situation is a victim of the of the whole rush thing that I was talking about because if if the first two movies had progressed the story the way they should have then you wouldn't have had that situation in this movie where you go from you know Anakin being like having a conversation with Obi Wan to you know five minutes later he's helping Darth Sidious kill Mace Windu to five minutes later he's slaughtering a bunch of kids you know like that was that was yeah. the thing that was you know one of my biggest uh you know problems with this movie personally despite liking the movie is the fact that the timing is off and a lot of things like that because everything was so rushed because this movie was put in such a box because of the failures of the first two of the trilogy yeah but 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 just on that topic alone of just john just just to touch on what you were saying about you know the slaughtering of the younglings like how long do you really need to, to, to to spend on on the uh collapse of I just feel like that's somebody's that's view on, like on, on, that's on the dark side. I mean, I like it's either your light... happened at all. Like, that's just something that shouldn't even been in the movie. But that only movie. goes to show you, like, how... Like, like how... Alright, because like Bernard said, both of you are making great points, because here's the thing. Bernard, he talks about the, the, the rush. You're talking about how you go from Obi-Wan to killing younglings. And again, I, I feel like a lot of true fans... That, that that as far as because you know you have a lot of people that they oh a Star Wars movie let's go watch it and they probably only have ever seen the movies but the true fans that know the expanded universe understand that Darth Vader has done much worse than right, than just I'm, I'm kill just your I don't feel like they built up to it enough for me to make it like believable that this guy would do that. That's what I'm saying. It was just too much of a. They would need like they would they they would need like four hours. They would honestly, I mean, just to even put it in the movies, they they, they would need like four. I would have settled for like a half hour, like twenty minutes here, you know, like something like something more. Which you know, again, I but you wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't you because Darth Vader's story is so in depth. Like the things that he has done, like honestly. I don't know if I don't know if either of you have touched much upon the a little expanded universe, a little which bit. is canon. Yeah, just I don't know if if either of you have like really read into what is canon for Darth Vader, but I mean, just if you have, percent. you'll understand what I'm saying. It, it is that that and and I hate to say it because it's so cruel, but. That moment alone, that that simple sequence is so minor compared to what he had had okay, and done. Listen, I get that. I understand because I know enough about the expanded universe. I agree with you on that. But the fa- what I'm saying is, I looking at the movie on its own, the movie did not set that up well. They did, and like, okay, I agree with you that the expanded universe, Darth Vader, is a much more well expanded upon and nuanced character and that his motivations and everything make more sense and seems he has a more logical progression in his kind of like his mental decay i guess you could say but in the way it was presented in the movie it was just not done well i can agree yep. with that but i still think i still think with the time that they had 
and with and, and with they what, did what they shown, they did what they could with what the what they had to work with. Like, but I that, still yeah. I still stand by my words that it was an incredible story as far as the time that they had and with what they've shown. Because I feel like they kind of I mean how how much worse in, in in a normal person's eyes does it get killing kids? I mean they they kind of. Well, that they was kinda, really just to drive the point of the film of how evil he you know, could, how evil Yeah, he exactly. Could. Like, how, how far his descent was at that point. Like, yeah. they, 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 they kind of, when he walks in, the kids don't even see him as a threat. They're like, oh, hi. And da, 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 da. and then he's just like, and they're all dead. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just, yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying, John, but, but what I'm saying is, I feel like in a way, in, in, and in a lot of these movies, the prequels, at least, not not you know so much even the spinoffs, but the prequels that that they kind of hope that people and the true fans, you know, know you know the 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 expanded okay. version of that I'm character. Is, I, I yeah. don't think it's fair to, to use that to judge the, to judge the movie based on the EU. I just don't think that's a fair assessment of it. Sure. Okay. Because we're trying to talk uh, about the movies on their own, and I don't think like involving all of the expanded universe stuff, like and using that to judge the quality of the movie and the quality of the right. I just don't think that that's good. I just I don't think, think that's a, I think a sound to a, way to, to judge a small extent. Just, I, I would agree with that. Much. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, we'll give you that. Yeah, the movie by itself, without the expanded universe, I will give you that. But but yeah. because I've already I'm not saying it was a bad witnessed. Movie, but I, I feel like I've been like the devil's advocate here and talking entirely negative about the movie, but I liked a lot of things about the movie. Like I, first of all, I think Ewan McGregor was from day one, yep. maybe not in the first movie, but from second movie on was a great choice to play Obi Wan. Definitely. Um, and in this movie specifically, um, there was some kooky stuff like Grievous. We didn't talk about him at all yet, but Grievous was kind of a missed opportunity in terms of his. This is a bad thing, but Grievous was kind of a missed opportunity. He could have been a lot cooler and could have done more he just i think kinda, he like, was a victim of the time situation him. too honestly like they didn't have they had so much else going on they didn't really have movie. time for him which sucked like he was he could have had a whole movie where he was like the main bad guy like attack of the clones like who was the main bad guy in that movie i don't think there even really dooku. was a main it was kind of dooku guy. but he wasn't even really around that much yeah, yeah he's he really there kind of, yeah so i feel like grievous could have had like his own movie right but uh, oh, yeah. he was kind of a wasted opportunity um uh, yep yeah, I mean, he was in the Clone Wars and stuff. He was obviously a lot further expanded, but I'm not going to yeah. use that to judge the movie because it's not part of the movie. Sure. But anyway, uh, Grievous was a lost opportunity. But another thing I liked about the movie was, again, the lightsaber battle between... Bernard said it was a really good life. I wouldn't say it's the best in the series. I wouldn't even say it's arguably the best. I would say it's a good lightsaber fight. I would say undisputed the best fight in the series was Vader versus Luke on Bespin, but that's just me. Um, but... Uh, yeah, the lightsaber fight battle was good. Uh, Hayden Christensen's performance was surprisingly passable, uh, <laughs> and the just the overall um, and the fact that they basically cleaned up cleaned up a mess that the other two movies set up is definitely something that is, I, I believe, admirable. And they did a pretty good job of cleaning up basically the shit on table um, that the previous two movies set and the poor the poor circumstances. And then the final thing I want to say that I. Uh, thought was good about the movie is I thought the the way they did the executing order 66 montage like that whole thing yeah. was just cool okay. and well done like it just made you like if there was any way that they could have gone from like because that worked pretty well where it basically made it, like the tone of the movie entirely changed after that it basically like you were like oh well everything's kind of like okay I can see those problems but then after that it's kind of like it basically like destroyed if you were really paying attention to it, the mood of the movie just became like so dark after that. You know what I mean? Which I think yeah. that was well done. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I didn't even uh, I, I didn't agree. even talk about that, but I I enjoyed that a lot as well. That Can I just add the like the other thing too that 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 kind of goes back to your uh, your time restriction was like I understand that you know people are able to you know. Uh, when you're having a physical ailment, you you know your your, your mental, uh, you know standpoint on it, it it's a big deal, you know. Sure. But I mean, with all the technology, I mean, for for Christ's sakes, they had laser swords coming from crystals, like, and you're telling me that that Padme, you know, her whole and 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 again that. I'm gonna leave the expanded universe out because oh, I get that. That's not fair to the end of the movie. Man. 
that you know oh, yes yeah. but but yeah. but for 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 someone giving childbirth to twins mm-hmm. when they gave the reason to why the mother didn't survive yeah, yeah that was really you bad. know that was bad she just like, she, she lost just the will to live. Yeah. oh she lost her will exactly my you took the words out of my mouth she she wa- she lost the will to live like well, Motherfucker, really. you what have her hooked up. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like it just, it's, it's like, you couldn't have said like, oh, he drained the life out of her doing what he was doing or like, you couldn't have come up with a better, with a better solution than, well, she lost the will to live. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's like something that someone who doesn't like, if you go to a doctor and it's like someone's dying and he's like Dr. Nick and he has no idea what's going on. That's like something. He <laughs> Simpsons tells reference. You. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. He's like, I don't know what to know. She lost the will to live. Her skeleton is trying to jump out of the mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I feel, I feel like, and then on top of that, to add insult to injury, when the, you know, they're twins, they're brother and sister. Yeah. You have two separate families. One of, like royalty and yeah. one of like peasant like oh i'll take this one yeah. and you take this one like yeah. no that was bad. I, that I just, was bad. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna defend it because like the the way that they well, the way that they I, I could understand hurriedly they were, like, stuck everyone into their uh the way that they so hurriedly stuck you're everyone telling into me their... some rich ass fucking family that that you know leia grows up her name is literally like uh, oh, her whole title is Princess fucking Leia. Yeah. You're telling me that that family couldn't have afforded one more kid? See, I think I, think, I, I have I think to debunk that a little bit because I think the main up. the main yeah. reason why they didn't do that was because they wanted to keep them separate in case Vader ever found one of them. Um, but I do agree with your point that yes, like it seems kind of imbalanced that you would send like you know the you would send Leia to live with like the senator and his wife and live the life of luxury. Uh, you know, and become Princess Leia, and then you send Luke to fucking suck dust in the desert. You know, with his uh, with his T sixteen bullseye rock womp rats. You know, so in his power converter. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, <laughs> I definitely get your point there. Um, but yeah, I think we should probably wrap up the uh, the um, Revenge of the Sith here. Um, I want to say, yeah, um, I want to say that I think the reason, despite all the ups and downs of this movie that we discussed. Um, I think the reason that this movie ranks where it does on this list kind of goes back to what I said in the beginning of the, uh, when we tar- started talking about this movie was that it did the best or close to the best that it could with what it had to work with. And, uh, that's a big thing because one of the biggest, um, decisions I had to make, or we all had to make on this list was, uh, this last two that we just came to was ranking either, um, the force awakens or revenge of the Sith higher than one another. And I have to say, I think it was really close for all of us, honestly, but I think again, the reason that we ended up, uh, putting revenge of the Sith over, uh, the force awakens is the fact that to me, like, like I've said, revenge of the Sith takes, a very, very, very shitty situation, and they still turn out a good movie out of that situation. The Force Awakens takes pretty much one of the most optimal situations that they've ever had Everybody in the Star Wars movie. universe, and only turns out just a good movie out of that situation. Uh, because not to go and back to the Force Awakens, but they had they had so many things working for them in the Force Awakens. They had the original trio agreeing to come back to the set. They had a clean slate, or more or less a clean slate to work with in the movie. Um, they didn't have like it. It wasn't a prequel trilogy like the the uh, prequel trilogy was, so they didn't have to worry about continuity toward the future. Um, you know, it did. They didn't have like you know with Revenge of the Sith how the movie was boxed in where they had two prequels before it and then a whole trilogy after it this movie is just expanding upon the universe after everything so my point being is that i feel that the force awakens had so many more advantages in so many ways than revenge of the sith but yet they came out to be you know only just you know they came out to be both good movies but i have I to give more credit back. credit to revenge of the sith exactly because it worked about. with a sub suboptimal situation what was that I think what we were, I think we were talking about this earlier, but it basically comes to like your level of expectation versus like how well the movie delivers on that level of expectation has a huge effect on how good you perceive that movie as being, right? right. Like Definitely. if you're expecting a really good movie and you just get an okay movie, you're like, I eh, wasn't that 
feels kind of bad. But if you get like if you're expecting like a bad movie and you get a movie that's actually pretty good, you're like, wow, that movie was really actually good, right? Yep. Like that was a great movie. Like you tend to overrate it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like the cognitive dissonance thing where it's like when your expectation is further off of especially if it's like in the direction of like you're expecting something good and you get something bad you tend that to makes like it even make worse it, yep yeah it makes it even worse right it, like whereas if it was just like you had no expectations and the movie was bad you'd probably actually be able to find more positives in it right yep. but whereas when you, I, i'd say like a revenge of the system last Je- or not last Jedi, force awakens are pretty close in terms of quality in a lot of ways like they're both they both have their inconsistencies and their problems but at the end of the day they're both good movies uh, but it's just that the reason why a Revenge of the Sith probably edges it out is just because it was expected to kind of it had a very poor setup and it was expected to you know it had a hard time being good whereas uh, Force Awakens had a great setup and it had a you know it could have been great but it was only- yes exactly I would one hundred percent agree with that and I think that's a good place to uh, to uh, leave off on um, Revenge of the Sith so um, we are now in the top three. Uh, and so, of course, uh, by process of elimination, the only movies left here are the original trilogy making the top three here, and uh, rightfully so, I think, in all of our minds. Uh, and coming in at number three on the list, we have Episode Six, Return of the Jedi, which was, of course, the uh, wrap-up to the original trilogy of Star Wars movies. Um, just a really, really good movie, honestly. Um, I really like this movie for a lot of different reasons. Uh, probably uh, the largest reason of which um, is the fact that this movie is kind of the culmination of everything that we've been um, you know, building up from the past two movies. Um, in addition to that, you get to see um, the ultimate redemption of uh, Darth Vader, obviously, at the end of this movie is a huge, you know, thing, probably the biggest thing about this movie, aside from, you know, the good guys win and, you know, kill the bad guys and, you know, everybody's happy and, you know, all that good stuff, you know, the happy ending. Um, but the fact that you got that something that when you started out the original Star Wars trilogy, something that seemed like the most impossible thing in the entire world would be Darth Vader repenting the most evil bastard that you've ever seen, like, you know, in these movies. And then even in, you know, the next one in uh, empire, they don't really, they don't really make any kind of suggestion to the point of like, there could be any redemption for Darth Vader. And even in return of the Jedi, you get the idea. Like he was even going to kill Luke at the end of that. If Luke didn't join him, like that's seriously the the vibe you got there. Exactly. And then you have, even in return of the Jedi, you have, you know, these, you know, you have the situation where, um, it, even though there are some subtle hints dropped throughout the movie, you still don't really get the feeling of like, oh yeah, Darth Vader's finally gonna, you know, turn back to the light at the end of the movie. And then he does. And it's just the ultimate redemption story, which I know, you know, Mitch, you know, would appreciate greatly because he enjoys a good redemption story. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just awesome how that all plays out. And the fact that, um, Luke, you know, goes to the lengths that he does to make that happen really like that's that's the other big story coming out of this is not only the the repentance of Darth Vader but the fact that this is truly when Luke becomes the hero that he is um in this movie because of everything he does in this movie in the beginning um to save Han which was a great sequence in the beginning of this movie um and then at the end I don't know if you guys heard it but I had to do it do what I don't know I don't know if you heard that I didn't hear it go ahead you didn't hear it? No. What'd you say? You were like, Uta, wata, una, da. like that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if, I, if, if the audio is going to play to your Discord, but tell me if you hear this. Nope. I don't hear anything. Nope. <laughs> well, you tried. At least you give him the at least you tried cake. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, going Did back to... you hear to, that? No, we, nope. we, we couldn't didn't hear you. Nothing. Sorry, buddy. Um, oh, I literally played the Star Wars this theme song just for these last three real quick, just the beginning of it. That's okay. Um, th- that's all right. Um, maybe um, maybe we, Discord is blocking it because it's copyrighted. Maybe. God well, damn George, it. George Lucas will do anything for a dollar. So, you know, I, I'd be surprised if this podcast doesn't get taken down if I don't pay for it. Um, but, this is a, very, this is a very, quick, very quick aside. I just want to say, have any of you guys seen the Vader fan film? No. Uh, depends on which one. There's been a, there's actually been a couple. No, the one by Star Wars Theory. The name of it was uh, Shards of the Past, I think. 
I don't think I've seen that one, no. Okay, you got to watch that. It came out like very recently, and it was very good. It's short, and there's going to be a sequel to it, but you got you got to watch that if you haven't. Okay, um, I'll we'll check it out. Have to check that out. But but going back to what I was saying, um, as far as Luke's character development goes, um, is just as meaningful if not more so. Um, like I said, this is where Luke really becomes the hero um, that he is uh, for through all of his actions, uh, not only in the beginning, but at the end, um, you know, essentially refusing to fight Vader despite how evil he is and despite, you know, everything being on the line and, you know, going as far as to not only, you know, refuse to kill Vader when he has the opportunity at the end, obviously, um, but also to even disarm himself and just kind of, like, put his fate literally in Vader's hands, like, literally just be willing to die and let the Emperor kill him if Vader wouldn't have chose to save him. So those are the actions of a true hero, in my opinion. But um, I want to turn it back over to uh, John for more, you know, on uh, the the um, Return of the Jedi. You were going to say Last Jedi, but yeah. This yeah, the, I'm sorry. We're, I'm, I'm, I have to apologize to the fans that we just keep bringing up The Last Jedi, but as you can tell, the uh, the sour taste is still in our mouths of, of that movie. Yeah. But, but going that, to that, a happier that, note, which was Return of the Jedi, go for it. Okay, so I want to say when I when I was a kid, Return of the Jedi was actually my favorite Star Wars movie when I was a kid. And like, I don't know if, if you remember this, Bernard, mm-hmm. but – the first time I saw the Star Wars movies, the first three, and I think it was the first time you saw the Star Wars movies too, mm-hmm. was, do you remember when my dad, our dad used to rent the trailer out to his friend? Yeah, Jim? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. Yep. Do you remember we, we went up there and we watched the three original trilogy movies? It must've been like 1995. Do you remember this? Yep. I do remember that. Yep. <laughs> we went up to the guys, tra- to the trailer. Yeah, because he had them all on DVD. Freaking... No, he had them on VHS. Or VHS. Yeah, I was going to say VHS. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's taking it back yeah. a ways, but yep. Yeah, and, and we watched the original. I, I don't even know if they were like the original versions or if they were remastered at all at that point. Yeah, but I, I think I, they were I, the I know non-remastered. Fact, I think they were I, like I don't, the original ones. They may have been, but I know for a fact that it was before Phantom Menace came out. So it was in the 90s, yes, right? Yes, well before. Because that. I remember I, we may have even started watching them because we, the Phantom Menace was like announced at that point and everybody was like, you know, anticipate, but I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. must have been like probably, I would say at the latest, like 1998, right? Yep. So we were both very young. And I remember at the time, like Empire Strikes Back, like scared the shit out of me when I was a little <laughs> kid because I, I, because I was like, I was like, oh my God. Darth Vader chopped off Luke Skywalker's hand. That's so scary. But Did you like, guys I'd still not him. hear that? Yes, yeah, sorry. No, we, the, yeah, not, we still no, it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Come on. Like, was, don't, don't worry I was about like, it. Uh, Darth Vader chopped off Luke Skywalker's hand. That's so scary. But in Return of the Jedi, I just love the fact that it gave a really great resolution to the series. And I was like, I was such a sucker for like the good guy wins trope. But like, Return I think of the we Jedi all are when we're right. a younger like, they, age. But yeah. yeah, they did it right. Like. They Luke was such a badass in that movie. Like, yep. you really got the feeling that like Luke was like like that movie gave you the feeling of like Luke could have beaten Vader at any moment. Yeah, that's like how powerful. Like you were like, okay, he has like really come into his own and he has really like matured. And Luke is like the man now. Like he went from being like a little ass farm boy who didn't know even know what the Force was to being like the ultimate badass in the span of three movies. Like you followed Luke's journey throughout three whole oh great three whole movies, and you know. It's just the fact that like they just did a, such a good job of putting it all together at the end that like it was in my opinion it just flowed very naturally and it just worked. Absolutely. Um, now some things I just want to bring up that I didn't like. Oh yeah, I, I'll say a couple more things I do like. I, I really like the the job the whole job of the Hut Palace space thing. Like everything from like the Rancor pit, so many iconic things. The Rancor pit, Leia in the slave bikini, her choking out Jabba the Hut, uh, Luke's the whole fight on. The, I actually think the fight on the sail barge. Is probably one of my favorite fights in the history of Star Wars, where like R two D two shoots out Luke's lightsaber, right? Yep, that was and that was a great, it. that was an absolutely great, great sequence, one hundred percent. The whole agree. sequence, that's that Boba sequence Fett, where? So <laughs> going, yeah, that, that sequence, that's the only thing about that. Is as funny as that was, Boba Fett had a very disappointing end, but at the time, like, like honestly, Boba Fett had like all of ten minutes of screen time between Empire and uh, you know Return of the Jedi, so he wasn't exactly a major character. He was basically. Yeah on the same level as like you know even like Tarkin and uh, had more like, he wasn't really that much of an important character and his ending was you know looking in retrospect it was disappointing because of all the expanded universe stuff but yeah. 
I just feel like the whole that whole fight, that whole scene on that barge was just so it just it was worked great. well. It and was every great. time, I, even, even even on rewatches, I still get like giddy watching it. I'm like, wow, this is because everything just like at that point, it's like you have the Star Wars movie music playing. And God damn it! Still it, didn't hear that. Take notes, Disney. That's yeah, how you like, make a Star movie. Wars movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like, it, it, yeah, exactly. But. And Luke returning to Dagobah and Yoda dying, that yeah. was all, you know, it was... Everything logic, was very everything well done, sense. 100%. It was just logical. The movie was very logical. And I have to bring up, though, the, the biggest, most glaring issue with the movie that everybody has a problem the with. The Ewoks. And, what, and that is, <laughs> this is what probably brought the movie, you know what I'm going to say, but this is probably what brought the movie down from uh, probably the second place spot, or even possibly the first place spot to the third place spot, is the Ewoks and the yeah. whole just existence of them. And I feel like the movie would have been... The movie would have had so much more potential and been so much better if it would have been the way it was supposed to. You know how it was supposed to be, right? The Ewok. Right? Do you know Bernard? Mm, uh, what are you talking about? Do you? I, I know, know Mitch probably knows, right? Mitch probably. Uh, knows, yeah, yeah, and yeah absolutely. The Ewoks, were supposed, the Ewoks were supposed to be the Wookies, like in the original draft of the script. It was supposed to be on your. <laughs> yeah, the they Ewoks were. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 He's one hundred percent right on that. They, they yeah. were literally supposed to be. Yep. Each yeah, day. I think I think you're right. I it think this, made... this movie probably this movie definitely would have made second on the list if it wasn't for that. I would 100 percent agree because because that like, whole thing was kind of no dumb sense and these little ass pokey, the Ewoks just come out of nowhere. Yeah, and also if you read the EU, it's it's part of the uh, it's part of the Star Wars lore. The Wookies were enslaved by the Empire, and it would have just made the whole story so much sweeter and so much more. Uh, complete if like the Wookiees the ending of the movie was the Wookiees getting their revenge and like overthrowing helping to overthrow the Empire instead of these random little ass teddy bears that are just annoying and nobody likes <laughs> yep. right yep yep you're 100% agreed so that is the biggest glaring problem is just the Ewoks are just so freaking annoying and they're just in waka, waka, moka, faka, waka. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that. that's, that's like the hut I think you got let's, up. The, let's, the let's, Ewoks, let's let's braid Leia's hair because that's what yeah. makes sense. Yeah. The Ewoks were like, wah, 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 wah. I think the, uh, <laughs> not to, not to, not to <laughs> fixate too much, but that's also the, I think the music they were playing in the background with the whole Ewok sequence was just um, God awful to like, it, it was just so hokey and like dated. And it was pretty and much it, the, whole, the entire like time that they'd wasted with the Ewoks, which was a considerable portion of the movie was basically just like all for like the a couple like slapstick jokes like aha c3po they think he's god blah, yeah, ha, ha, ha. Exactly. like that's that was oh basically my like god. Yeah, that was basically, god the yeah, golden god the golden god that was basically like the payoff of all of that was like oh they think c3po is god that's, that's you know it. what's you know what's really funny <laughs> like the whole is payoff. Is I think that, you know, I've been thinking about this quite a bit lately, not to tangent off too much, um, but I feel like this whole thing with the Ewoks was what ex- what inspired what they did in episode one with, like, the Gungans and everything was, like, oh, making, absolutely. Yeah, like making a stupid, like race to, to, of um, aliens to try and like be comic relief but it just turns out to backfire because everybody hates it except for the the whole thing with the gungans was like ended up being way worse than even the ewoks in my opinion but oh yeah <laughs> um yeah the ewoks were definitely and the other thing that even about besides the fact that they were annoying is it just it's i find it so unbelievable that this like power that is like so freaking like the imperials are so like dominant supposedly and they control the whole galaxy and they essentially get their ass kicked by a bunch of teddy uh, bears yeah the teddy the teddy bears With have a slingshot throwing rocks. rocks at them and it takes them out yeah. <laughs> yeah. like the, yeah. the most yeah. highly trained army in the uh, in the galaxy and they uh, get yeah. taken it would, out it would make way more sense if they have a bunch of like 10 foot wookies smashing their asses yeah <laughs> oh, 100 percent agreed yeah no that that would have um that would have definitely been a difference maker but um you know all, all in all even despite that just still a great movie honestly i know Mitch, you've been pretty quiet because you're trying to get that stupid music to play. But um, if you want to, if you want to give that a rest and uh, give us your thoughts on the, uh, on uh... there it is, there it is. You better turn that off. Before yeah, t- all, right. <laughs> all right, all right, turn it off. I don't want to get sued. Turn it off. Turn it off. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> He's orgasming. He can't. Uh... I just, I just. My pants got wet and tight right. at the same time. Right. That's great. Uh, Tell your mom to turn off her porn music. Uh, all, right, all right, but all right. but but but, Going back but honestly, movie. we had to we had to do that. We had to do that. I'm I'm sorry. That's no, that, that's just good. it's all that's good. Just, as long as I don't get taken down by George Lucas, I'm good. 
You can't. You know what? George Lucas made Indiana Jones and the uh, the uh, team up. up between him and, and and you know what? They fucked up, so they can give us that. <laughs> yeah. My 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 thing is this. <laughs> my thing is this though. It is I, I like you said the whole time that he just stood idly by and was like. <sighs> I mean, I feel like it was a dark moment for Luke to, like, stand there and, like, watch his friends, like, get get beaten and not necessarily, you know, to a degree where he knew they were going to lose. And I feel like there's a foresight we're not seeing, like, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, like he knew, like, I feel, we were talking about the end where uh, the Emperor was trying to get him to turn and he tried to make him think that yeah was and, and, and was i feel lost. like you know he he had possession of luke's saber yeah. and luke knew the whole time that at any point he needed that or wanted that he could pull it and and i feel like as he's like sitting there and he's like something 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 dark side uh-huh. like I, f- I feel like that whole time luke is getting taunted and like you know, he, Luke is like I Dr. Strange. Like, he knows the outcome. <laughs> exactly. But but not just that, but I, I felt like he was he almost kind of tried to escalate it to a point where like he he was he was looking at it to a degree of he's dealing with another Anakin or he's dealing with another, you know, Darth Vader prodigy, but what he didn't realize was that it, it, he wasn't. You know, and and that's kind of what what really kind of did Sidious in was you know Luke was stronger exactly like he 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 may not have been technically stronger than Vader as far as in the force or uh dealing with a lightsaber because you know Vader's Vader's but if again and I I hate to bring in the the lightsaber but but maybe not stronger I hate, I hate, hate, I hate to bring in the meta, you, you know, you know the 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 the, the expanded universe. But right. in that moment, um, even with Vader losing all of his limbs aside from his head and having his core, he was still stronger technically within the. Uh, he he had a higher midichlorian count sure. than what uh, Luke had, um, being his offspring. And yeah, but Luke, Luke kicked his ass. Yes. And Luke could have, you know, I know but, you're going to make, but, but, make the argument that Vader was holding back, but like this, I, I, I can't agree with that. And, and, and it's funny you say that because the reality is that like Vader in his prime, I won't, I won't even go as far as to say Vader was holding back. I won't say that because I think at that point okay. Vader, he, I think he just the realized, he realized he was, was fighting for his life, and he, you know, but he, yeah, he just couldn't. That he, that he realized he realized he was bested. Yeah, but wasn't going to quit. You know, yeah. um, I feel like in the end, because like I said, it, you know, again, not to bring, and I feel like it's fair enough to bring the expanded universe into the original movies to certain points, because definitely. they didn't force to the prequels, but you know, in I mean, the expanded right universe. But I just think like using the EU is like saying the movie is good because you, of you have to that use it. In, the I, in my opinion, you have okay, to use so, the EU sparingly to, to, you know, like certain okay, things. Okay, but yeah. sparingly, you can use, you can use I, and I get it, like, I get it with the prequels and I get it, and I get it with the spinoffs, I get it. It's different, but as far as the originals go, mm-hmm. I feel like Vader knowing, you know, that he was what he was and, and, and knowing that he had the abilities that he had as far as what his suit allowed him. Mm-hmm. Because at any point, like Vader, he, 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 he didn't stand on his own anymore. Mm-hmm. Vader was what his suit allowed him to be. And Vader had every opportunity to fix the problems that his suit gave him. But that's why I keep bringing up the foresight, because here's the thing. You know, you know how Yoda always sat there, and he was just like, oh, things will be what you don't know they will be. Like, 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 they, like, like Yoda had, like, this knowing of, like, oh, you know, and, and even Obi-Wan, oh, you strike me down, I'll always be, you know, I'll be stronger than you ever imagined, or, or, you know, even not to bring up the Last Jedi again, but the statement that he makes to to Kylo is, 
strike me down now and I'll always be with you. Like sure. there's this foresight that comes with being so strong within the force. I feel like that, you know, that kind of, that's what creates that mortality. And I feel like Vader, not, not fixing the fact that his suit makes him vulnerable to a force lightning, which is obviously what Darth Sidious is going to use in the sense of uh, punishment because Sidious building the suit knows that that's what Vader is vulnerable to and knowing that Vader is more powerful than he is and, and could beat him at any point. Luke, on the other hand, was still fully intact aside from, I believe it was his right hand. Was it his right hand? His right hand. Yep. Yeah, you know, um, so he only lost a little bit there, but, um, you know, I, I, yes, Luke at any point could have beaten them both, but at the same time, if Vader would have made the proper precautions, mm-hmm. could have taken down his son, but didn't feel that as necessary. And 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 that's just in the expanded universe now. In, in, in the universe that we stand in and what we've watched in the movie itself, uh, yes, Luke Luke definitely stood taller than than what uh, he let on. And the whole time that you thought he was a captive was what he wanted. He wanted to be in front of Sidious. He wanted to be in front of Vader. He wanted to try to pull whatever good he could out of his father and, and potentially create, you know... Anakin again, because even Vader, you know, made the comment that this that Anakin is dead, and, uh, and, yeah, and, and it's too and, late for and, him. That's what that's what he says. It's too late the for the movie, him um, when he but, actually but, takes but, Luke prisoner when he surrenders but, to him. Yeah, but in the end, the prophecy is kind of fulfilled because it's not Luke who kills Darth Sidious; it's Vader. It, it, in the end, it's kind of like the prophecy went, you know, kind of went full circle to where. Yep. Anakin was reborn yep. and took out Darth Sidious, but his suit in doing what so, kept he him alive was, was what exactly was damaged beyond, you know, uh, repair before they could get him to the planet that he lived on that actually had spare suits for him to be uh, realigned with. So to therefore... be honest with you, I think that it, you know, g- sticking on that point, I have to just interject this. I, s- I have to say, I think, in my opinion, I don't think Vader wanted to live after that. I don't think he wanted to make it off off the uh, Death Star and live to fight another day. I think he he realized that he had done his crimes and that he had, you know, made his mistakes and that he realized that now after he, you know, did what he did, he set things right when he, you know, it, like I said before, it took Luke literally being willing to lay his own life down and saying, you know, if you don't save me, I'm going to die, you know? And, and, and after he had, Vader had made that choice to, you know, like you said, the rebirth of Anakin, you know, and, and chose to kill the emperor finally. And, um, you know, turn back to the light, um, and set things right. I feel like at that point he was done, you know, like he, he had, felt that he did what he needed to do and it was his time to go, you know? I, I, I agree with that hundred percent because the whole, the whole time I've been saying is Vader could have made the precautions necessary. He could have made his suit resilient to that force lightning, not, not, not weakened to it. And, you know, uh, I believe it was what his respirator that caused him to be able to breathe yep. was what was so severely damaged that he, you know, he no longer could, survive once his mask was uh you know his helmet was pulled off of him and he actually requested that luke Luke to take it off yep so that he could see his son with his own eyes and not see through those lenses and i thought that whole thing was perfect to be honest and we mentioned it earlier when we were talking about um you know that when we were talking about uh you know how to do a villain correctly with uh you know kylo ren and i think in this movie they 100 percent did it perfectly with vader um you know how how you in his final moments you get to see him without that suit on without you know you get to see him not as that menacing figure that he was known to be you know for so long not as that you know evil man that he has been for so long now you just get to see him you know for what he is which is like the the 
burned, scarred, deformed, crepit old man that he is under that suit, you know, and I thought that was... You get to see him vulnerable. Yes, right before he dies, and I think that's perfect. That was a perfect... Like I said before, take notes, Disney, because this is how you make a Star Wars movie, you know? Um, exactly. It was, it was exactly. I feel like if they were able to... I don't know why I'm going back to the Revenge of the Sith, but I feel like if they were able to pull off something with Episode Nine, like they did with Revenge of the Sith, or even more so... well. It's funny because Return of the Jedi is probably widely regarded as the weakest of the original trilogy movies. Yeah. But like, if they would have, uh, you know, if the Episode Nine can even be like half as good as Return of the Jedi, it would be probably the best in that trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that's. I think that's a pretty good spot to leave it on. Um, on. Um, well, I just want to say the two Jedi, things. Unless you guys well, want to well, say yeah, anything I'm, else, real quick. I've, no, I've I'm good. I'm good. Let John, yep. let John get his uh, statements. Sure. Two, two things. One is that I don't know if you noticed, but in the remastered version, they added Jar Jar Banks to the end of it. I did notice um, that, and I'm disgusted that? by it. Continue. <laughs> because they, because in their in the in the most recent remaster, they show uh, like all around the galaxy after the Imperial, uh, the Empire falls. Mm -hmm. They show all the different cities and everything, and they show uh, I think it's Coruscant or Naboo or one of them. Yep. One of the planets from the. Prequels. It's Naboo. Like, it's Naboo. Yes, okay, Naboo. And you just hear like in the background, and I think you can see like Jar Jar Binks like climbing a building or something, and you just hear like "We saw free." Yeah, that was that was horrible. I, I, hated, <laughs> and, I hated it. And, and the other thing I wanted to say is uh, Han Solo when he just like does his like shoulder shrug, and he's like, you know, when they take the. the shield bunker over yeah it's, it's that's so han solo yeah so there, i was gonna say there's good oh, one. i mean we talked a lot about uh, you know the whole thing with luke and vader because that's the predominant you know what thing in han this solo? movie but the whole thing with han solo and then you know him and leia getting together was you know a part it added to the feel-good end of the movie side note as i'm sure yeah, i people have to already know that you know originally han solo uh was going to die in this movie but then they decided um you know not to do that because they wanted the movie to have a more feel-good end which i think was the right call personally but um, I, I have to side note here before we continue. Sure. Uh, literally, the last thing I want to say is um, because they're bringing up the like the remastered versions. Yeah. Um, in the original one, you had like this like old guy with a beard that like was Darth Vader, like Anakin's like like ghost. Oh, the Force ghost at the end. Yeah, and then in the yeah. remaster they replaced then, him with Hayden the remastered, <laughs> it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have, have to throw it in there. Like I feel like I feel like that just did it a dishonor because like I, again they have to stick it. they have to take like two other things but... they have to take two other things that made the prequel trilogy bad and stick them like in this movie Jar Jar Binks and Hayden Christensen and it's like yeah, why yeah <laughs> they have to take both of those concepts and be like well you know what we need to put them in the remaster the fuck mm. you do dude yeah, you no, need to keep that shit out of there because that's what people didn't like about the other <laughs> shit but go yeah. go for it. Yeah, was that it, John, or do you have something else you want to add? That's pretty much it. All right, yeah, so I think that's a good place to leave it. Uh, great movie, great end to the original trilogy. But uh, moving along, coming in at number two, we have episode <laughs> four, A New Hope, which was, of course, the first ever Star Wars movie, the one that started it all. Um, another just great movie, uh Cinematic. Some of the old fogies might know it as just Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say. Um, so, uh, cinematic masterpiece, obviously, uh, very widely acclaimed and rightfully so. Um, you know, groundbreaking. I legitimately think that this movie has uh, a very strong uh, argument to be made that this is the best Star Wars movie. Yeah, this is this is one I think that um you know is again we talk about movies edging each other out. I think you know in this pretty much in this entire top three, well in the entire top five, but specifically in the top three, I think any one of the original movies in the original trilogy yeah. could have been could have potentially been good enough, you know, more or less to. I to think make... that I think that uh, there's a there's a noticeable gap. Uh, like looking back, I mean, I know I said that my favorite one growing up was. Uh, Return of the Jedi, but I think looking in retrospect and looking at it, you know, considering all the variables, uh, Return of the Jedi is honestly like it's distinctly a little bit lower. I, yeah, I would agree with yeah, that. I would say it's distinctly a little bit lower, but you know, this movie, um, no, my favorite growing up, I won't lie, my favorite growing up was as far as Star Wars goes, you know, was Return of the Jedi, but uh, yeah, 
I can see where you guys say that with, with the next one we're going to state, which we haven't even stated yet. But I, I can see where you say that. But at the same time, I feel like, I mean, an origin story is always better, in my opinion, than, yes, you know, what's what's already been done or what's already happening. But but I, I do I do feel like, you, you know, made the right call I don't know where I, we put everything. Yeah. And no, I think I, I do, because that. because I, I because I feel like, yes, a Return of the Jedi Great movie, one of my favorites. And these last three, I will say, hard handedly, it was it was very hard to place. It wasn't easy to say, okay, this one's you know one, two, and three. It, it was like, okay, it was pretty close. But how do you do? How do you decide? Like between okay, these three, agree, which one would sits? You agree with, would you agree with this statement? I think that if you look at all the Star Wars movies, like on their own, without considering the fact that any of the other movies exist. I feel like the best movie on its own is A New Hope because it was designed. Now, as a movie are, are you excluding? Movie. But are you excluding the uh, expanded universe? I, I have to. Excluding it. Because again, remember, right? you, got, you got to remember, I, I, I'm a purist, so I take everything into like comics, uh, novels. I take it all into consideration. So, are you I'm talking talking movies talking. standalone? Or are you talking? He's just talking in, movies just, standalone, exactly, and I have to say, exactly I I thing. do disagree. Hold on, with I, that. I, I have to. <laughs> I have to ask. Um, I'm asking because I have to. Are, John, are you referring to just the standalone, or are you referring to like even I'm including the expanded universes of each said movie? No, no. I'm just saying, looking at each movie like on its own, because the original Star Wars was designed like there was never any really plans for a sequel. Yes. To the original Star Wars when it originally came out, uh, and when it was originally shot and uh, written. So I feel like. The original Star So you're Wars talking movie, all of them movie. having their own swing solidly minus just in a you know the the now what now what's been expanded upon even in the original trilogies what's been expanded upon you're talking Again, just, I, I just individual think, movies I, I I know you've been using the EU this whole time but I just don't think including stuff from the expanded universe He's just talking I, about but I can't help not, not because it about... it only makes it help sense you know what I mean like right, right. for me at least like it only helps Certain my opinion is you can't you can't justify the quality of a media by other related media. It would be like me saying like, oh, last but it's not. I but I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not suggesting anything that's not movies. canon. Right. But but that's no, the thing. No, like like I, I, it's all canon. I'm not. I'm not throwing anything that in that, that that's it's it's literal canon. That's so therefore, right. the EU but is actually true. ever since Disney. Bought, ever since Disney bought Star Wars, the EU is not canon anymore. Okay. Okay. Well, but 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 now we're talking about the. But that's why I'm asking. The original trilogy wasn't Disney, so that's why I'm saying when when the EU was created, it, Disney or not, it still plays a part. So technically, if you want to get very technical about it, Disney doesn't own the original movies, At the time, and if, no, if no, they no, own no. the rights, whatever, they but they do, do not right. own the original. Like they can't. The it's time. not like there's going to be a New Hope remake. You know right. what I mean? So, like, at the time, no, I agree with what you're saying. At the time, yes, at the time, the EU was, you know, that these Although movies came out. The that, EU was. Actually, it's funny you should say yeah. that, Mitch, because they actually remade the, the 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 they remade a New Hope in a bunch of short comics that are terrible and like rewrite the story that they released on. Star I don't Wars even Star. want to think about this. Yeah, I don't I know, want to think about this. Yeah, but going back, going, going, going back to t- going back to topic. I don't, listen. I, I don't even want to think about this. I know exactly what you're talking about, and I appreciate you bringing that up. But I do not want to even think about yeah, this. Yeah, so we're so we're not going yeah, to. So going back to the original topic, re- which they was basically about, rewrote um, a new which was hope. Which talking about a new hope, a which was comes in at number two on our list. I would say, um, it is. I, I don't know that I would necessarily agree with that, with, with your statement that looking at everything in a vacuum, this is the best movie. It is a very, very strong contender, don't get me wrong. And I, I feel that on our list, the movie that made number one uh, just barely edges this movie out. Uh, why, don't we just of talk about both, why don't we just talk about both these movies together? Because everybody knows what number one is if they've been following the list. Let's just talk about it and just reveal the number one right now. Do it. Sure. All right. So obviously, um, by process of elimination, you all know that um, number one on the list is going to be uh, episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. Um, right. So I think we should so, talk about both. Yeah, movies because these movies, now. these movies are pretty closely intertwined um, with each other. Obviously, um, I feel like, um, like I said, I think Empire 
Strikes Back like edges out a choice. new hope. Surprising choice. Everybody puts Empire as the number one. Well, yeah, that, Empire Strikes Back is pretty much widely regarded <laughs> as the as the top Star Wars movie by most people. But as I said, I think not only for our <laughs> lists, but for a lot of uh, people and a lot of lists, uh, Empire just kind of edges out a new hope. Um, but I do want to specifically talk, you know, try to focus a little bit more on a new hope in the first part of the, you know, talk, and then you know, focus more on Empire after that. Even if, Gro- well, yeah, of course, of course, of course. But, yeah, but A New Hope uh, was was a great movie. Um, there's no denying it. It was groundbreaking. Um, you know, it set the stage for everything. It made, you know, it, it brought everything to life. Um, the way it was, everything was done was so, so um, sensibly and intelligent intelligently written and done um, with the way, you know, the storytelling and the characters and just pretty much everything about the movie. Um, There were some issues with the movie. Um, I think some of the stuff um, in the movie is kind of dated, kind of hokey a little bit, Um, but I think that's just kind of, it's a product of its time, so you can't really hold that against it too much. Um, But you can tell that they didn't have, like, everything, like, well mapped out about where things were going or, like, what the story or, like, what the force exactly even was, right? Yeah, they they had a little bit, you know, things weren't as well defined at that point, yes. Like, I just loved how, like, the most important character ever, like, in Star Wars lives in a hole in the ground and, like, (laughs) how the most irrelevant character, (laughs) I mean... Don't get me wrong. All respects due to the death of uh, Miss Fisher, but um, Leia again. I don't think played a big enough part to where, like, if she wasn't a character in in the fucking movies, I don't think it would have made a fucking difference. Because the reality is, right, I gotta disagree they, with you on that. Because I feel like Leia like was a legit badass in all of these, in the, especially this movie. Actually, like that's because one of the she told people like, what to do. She, like she because she was tortured in the by of the Darth movie. Vader. Dude, even when oh I was God, in the, movie, but, the but, fact that the fact that Leia was like a fucking like badass in this movie, like she was like in the like when when they're in the escape sequence and like Han Solo and Luke are basically like shit, we don't know what to do. Like she's the one who freaking leads the way, and like. Leia was just a really good cat. I feel like she, her character in this movie was just like she was just fucking tough as hell, and I thought that was really like even when I was like five years but, old. I, but like, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I get that. I'm I get that a, a strong leadership's important, but I'm saying is it didn't have to be Luke's sister. It could have been anybody. I know. Like that's, that's my of, point. Like that's my point. Like I like what I didn't understand though is how like like how different. But how do you do? How, how different do you think? And again, you know, we brought this up in the past with the hypothetical. How different do you I think the movie would have been? How but how <laughs> how different do you think the movie would have been if say roles are reversed? Okay, where instead of Luke, you know, I can shoot a. What was it? A muskrat? Whatever no, the fuck you said it was. It's a womp rat, damn it. He's bullseyeing womp, womp rats rat. in T16. I'm sorry. He's, he's <laughs> womp rats. I've been drinking some vodka. Excuse me. <laughs> womp rats. <laughs> he can bullseye womp rats, which is like the equivalent to like pod racing on like episode one. Oh, no. So, like, oh, God, no. Like, so, what I'm saying is like, how different would it be if like he was like that proper senator? royalty upbringing like what how how did you think he might have potentially turned and i know this has nothing to do with exactly the movies but like do you think that would have like created as strong of a definitive moral character that he was that like he had that humble upbringing probably as to where leia was more but 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 why not because leia while being tortured by one of the most sinister characters in star wars still did not reveal what she knew. Meanwhile, yeah, fair enough. It, that that's what I'm saying. Like, do you think Luke would have been just as strong in her position? Because again, I, I didn't. I don't mean any disrespect to you know Carrie Fisher. I, I her character was great, but what I'm saying is she didn't. I, I don't think it necessarily had to be in like a a twin scenario or like like yeah, brother you and can't sister. Yeah, the first movie because the first movie was that's if anything that was Return of the Jedi's fault. Like the first movie they didn't have no clue that they like I mean George Lucas might claim that he knew what he was doing from day 1, but that's not true. Like he didn't know that he was going to make Luke and Leia sisters. But that's just what I'm going off of where he was like, "Oh, I've always known." 
You know, again, like, I think, like, again, I think it's unfair to judge a movie. You have to judge it on that's own more. That's more the mistake. No, I agree like, with judge... you in the sense that I agree with John in the sense that that the, if you're going to bring that up, that's probably more of a mistake that you would categorize as Return of the Jedi. If if you're going to categorize it as a mistake, it would be more of Return of the Jedi's mistake. But I wouldn't even really categorize it as a mistake personally. I'm not saying a mistake. Um, I'm saying a hypothetical. Yeah, I would agree though I'm that saying... like, you know what you were saying with um, you know, I guess technically it didn't have to be her, but it, you know it was and it was cool and i think that you know she did a good job in you know her role and what she did um okay i think i think leia being like a badass in this movie is actually one of the highlights of the movie because it's just like unexpected and that was one of the things that made it cool is because they're doing like the whole save the princess type thing and it turns out like the princess is like you know ends up almost saving you know yeah no that's a cool that's a cool turn well she ends up being just just as competent if not more competent than the guys who are trying to save her don't you think it would have made yeah i was gonna say but don't you think it would have made more sense for the 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 character that luke was you know to be and 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 that you know my, my biggest thing is why leia not have any force abilities like like why why was that never pursued for her they were twins but she did they were they were siblings like but Leia like, was why always, was that never pushed like, like everybody said that uh when i think Leia that goes back to what i think that's goes Vader, back to Leia, what john said which is that you're, they 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 didn't know at that time like when they when they had everything you know play out the way it did and and we're going to talk about you know the, the that has something to do with what i want to say with the uh with uh, the last movie on the list um you know which is uh you know that they didn't the really fully have things kiss. yeah which is the the, the <laughs> fact of the matter is they didn't have everything fully planned out going into it's this kind of like movie. the one the one blemish on the ass of empire yeah exactly <laughs> is the incest kiss um but but yeah, that that that's just further proof that they didn't have everything planned out. So perhaps I think to your point, Mitch, I have to say perhaps that um, if they had you know everything figured out at that point, then maybe they would have delved more into that, and they would have kind of shown that Leia you know has some power with the Force, or they would have developed that more. Okay, you know? I heard, okay um, so here's the here's the fan theory, and I actually think this is a this is most fan theories are just bullshit pulled out of people's asses, but I actually feel like this fan theory specifically is a pretty good one. Is that remember when Darth Vader was interrogating Leia, and he's like, "I'm going to you know like she resisted the mind probes." Everybody was saying that was her using her Force power to resist. The mind probe. That's the fan theory, and that I think scene, that's actually that scene good is theory. awfully reminiscent of uh, Kylo Ren mind probing uh, um, well, uh, Ray I mean, in Kylo Episode Ren, Seven. I just had to throw that in there, but go ahead. Exactly. The Kylo Ren theme is the is the one that's that scene is the one that's reminiscent. By the way, but yes. uh, yeah, what I'm saying is when he was mind probing Leia, Leia resisted the mind probe, and that everybody says that was like early evidence of her being able to resist Force, you know, abilities, which means that she, it was kind of evidence that she had, you know, abilities in the Force. That makes so sense. You're, so, so you're thinking that it was a choice on her end not to, you know, kind of uh, learn how to use what she instinctually well, I don't had even within think her. That, I don't even think that she probably would no, have no, even realized that it at that know. point. She, yeah, she, yeah, she didn't exactly. know, but that, I agree with that. That's a good fan theory, actually, and I, I think that that makes a lot of sense because if you think about it it would be like well she doesn't know like why she's able to resist vader's mind probe she just knows she can you know and and that's yeah. why she wouldn't like delve further into it herself and be like oh well, why you know why is this like this like so I, yeah but you can also say that vader quote unquote said he did the mind probe but you know having that sliver of goodness in him nah. you know knowing that that's his he, daughter i didn't he didn't know that didn't. that's the thing he didn't know or, that. or did he? Well, he probably that's the thing. Be or did yeah, he? Well, we, 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 I don't think we have enough time left to, to get into a whole, you know, what if, you know, giant, what gigantic what if thing. Well, but, this is the um, thing. You can't really <laughs> break down 10 Star Wars movies yeah, in yeah, simply yeah. a few hours. Like, no, it's, because then we, would be, then we would be making the same mistake that they made in Revenge of the Sith. We'd be rushing things. <laughs> Fair enough. So I, I, I feel like the fans would appreciate the... Uh, uh, extra lay-in to to what what not I'm not talking just hypotheticals, but the questions that we all ask, sure, and and maybe a little bit of logic to them, and people drawing their own conclusions. But yeah, that's no, fine. but like I agree with you. We can continue on and actually talk about the movie. But that was just kind of my throw about was yeah. I just didn't understand. Okay, if they're twins, if they are twins, yeah. fraternal or not, why is it that? Luke is the prodigy as to where Leia is like, I'm the leader of the rebellion. Like, 
I get those are two badass roles, but Leia should have still been like, I can but she was build. Trained. And... Luke, Luke was aware of the Force, and he was trained in it by Obi Wan and then Yoda. Whereas Leia didn't really even know. But that's what I'm saying. But Obi Wan knew because he was there during the. You know, he knew there were two kids. Well, maybe and he knew, he everybody knew time they time. were they were split apart, and, and and like you said, that goes back to George Lucas claiming that he you know he knew had it all he, that he had stripped it, it out in his mind, and he had it all figured out. But in reality, if you did, then this would have made a little more sense. You know what I mean? So it's it's that's where I feel like it's kind of like a lie has has brought up questions, and that's where I'm standing at. It's like okay, if you're telling me this like i don't know why isn't this answered that that's kind of where i'm getting at so but but anyway that's let's we, we can continue we can roll I, I on i'm sorry yeah so um, um, but, no, you're good. Um, but uh but yeah john if you want to um give me your take on um on a new hope and uh kind of you know go through what you've you know liked about it or what you thought it did good and uh if you saw any issues with it then uh, go for it i think I think I've gotten to say most of what I uh, felt needed to be said already is okay. that, you know, the movie on its own stands very strong and it was kind of written as an original adventure. And I think that one thing that we haven't talked about that's very important is that this movie pretty much created the whole idea of whether, you know, you view this as good or bad. It pretty much created the idea of the blockbuster movie. Like this was the first movie that people really went to see like five times in the cinema. It was the first movie that really had like this just enormous cult like following that emerged from it. Like stuff oh, yeah. like the Avengers series and like all the big summer movies like X-Men and uh, any of them that exist nowadays. I mean, I don't feel like they would exist in the magnitude that they do if it wasn't for Star Wars. The original Fair Star enough. Wars. Yeah, no, th- that's and why I said this movie was very groundbreaking. Not just, I mean, I guess, like, at the same time, uh, I, I feel like the way the movie should be judged is looking at them on their own merits and standing on their own and not necessarily, but you also have to, with that, take into consideration the cultural impact that you have. And I don't, I got to be honest with you, I am hard pressed to find a single movie ever written or ever released that had the cultural impact of a new hope i really don't think there is one i think it's the number one in terms of the amount of cultural impact and the impact in the industry that it had i don't think there's any movie that has ever before or since done that and that's definitely a, a very fair point um i would probably agree with that um yeah the, like i said you know this this movie was definitely groundbreaking at the time um and even you know looking back on it was a you know it was a big landmark um so, Mitch, I don't know if you want to uh, weigh in then with uh, you know what you anything else that you liked about I, the movie. I, I, listen, I, this movie this movie was was perfection. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, I, I think this is the first time I can honestly say that the uh, sequel, mm-hmm. um, because Star Wars does things very funny. They they they're kind of all over the place and expect you to kind of piece it together like a puzzle, and that's fine, but. I think this is the first time because, again, you got to remember, I'm I'm 30 years old. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time since uh, I've seen a New Hope. Gotcha. It's been a long time since I've seen Empire. Gotcha. But if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, Empire followed a New Hope. Of course. Oh yeah. And. Well, and, yes, and 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 when I say, if you remember, you know, I don't want to sound stupid, but what I'm saying is, yeah. the fact that Empire, in not just my mind, but in many fans' minds, beats A New Hope out, not by like a, a, a landslide, but you know, it, it it's by it a few, you know, ticks. Sure. It, it, this is the first time I can say that in a movie series. And again, I'm talking movie series in the sense of like, at this point, we had three movies. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, a, a, a movie series that the sequel yeah. to said movie is is better. Yeah. Like, I mean, how many movies have we seen in now times to where, the and there are some, out. I'm not saying there aren't any. Yeah, where but like I'm the saying second one bombs dumb. out or the sequel bombs out. Yeah, and that's right. yeah, you know, you're talking you're talking about um, you know our number one, like I mentioned, which was uh, Empire Strikes Back, of course. And now. I'm not getting into detail, but yeah. I'm just saying, you know, it, it's just 
I did. I, I enjoyed the movie. It was a great movie. I think it set standards for not just movies of its type, movies of its kind, but I'm talking oh. movies uh, of, of all movies of, of today's standards. I mean, it just it covered everything that it needed to. It, it, was, it was perfection incarnate, but at the same time, how, you know, that that only brings Empire to that much of a greater of a level, and and yep. because right. you know, it, 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 and and yes, I know, John, you want to jump on it, but I, what I'm saying is, let me just finish this statement. Uh-huh. A New Hope, like the perfect fucking movie that you could you could ever hope to watch, as far as Star Wars goes, as far as any Star Wars fan comes, but. When you can create a movie, and I feel like this should be our transition, yep. when you can create a movie that tops this movie, that's when you know you have a true masterpiece, and that true masterpiece being titled The Empire Strikes Back. But I will say that The Empire Strikes Back could not have happened without the perfection of A New Hope. So I feel like, the, in a way, the Empire kind of stands on a leg of A New Hope. Right. And, and, I th- and I think that's where we should, we should transition over, speaking about both kind of in sequence. Yep. I feel like that's right. where we should kind of bring it to Empire yep. because so- the reality is A New Hope, yes, perfect fucking movie. But the, the the crazy thing to say is that hey, guess what? It got better from there. So yeah, it's like up in the empire. In fact, Nick, it's like it's perfect, and then the empire. It's like it's better than perfect. Next to that, perfection is crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, like, that's next kind to of, that, yeah. what, what do you what, what do you got to compete against? Uh, nothing. Well, yeah. here's the thing that I have to say. I'm, I put Empire as my number one, but I want to play devil's advocate and say, what about Empire? Did you say? Well, first of all. What would you do? You have any problems with a new hope? Where would you say is there a problem with that movie? And then, as a segue, what about my, Empire Strikes Back? Would I, you say I, is okay? Than Empire? I, my, my biggest thing with a new with, with, with a new hope was just I feel like I feel like it was all right. I might I might get some bashing for saying this a little slow. You know, the Godfather movie was was a great movie, but. Some people couldn't get to through the first twenty minutes, Dude, and then they turned it off. Way, way slower than a New Hope. <laughs> sure. No, no, I, I no, 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 but that, there, that, 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 but that's just my kind of connection. Yeah. Like Godfather is another movie where you're like, oh my god, best movie ever, but it, it takes time to get into. So if you don't have the patience to get into it, then it's not going to stand out for you. So yes, you, but, Godfather. Yeah, no, no, I have to say that I would actually probably agree with Mitch on this because um, that's, uh, I was going to say, my my very few uh, minor issues with A New Hope that I have and why I have uh, Empire edging it out for number one. I think all all of us had Empire as number one on our lists, um, which is why it made number one. Um, That, what you were saying, Mitch, with the whole thing with uh, A New Hope does have a little bit of a slowness to it that Empire doesn't have, which is a minor thing, but it's still a little bit of a thing. Another I thing that I want to mention that. about no, but it was necessary. Right, but John, can you can you just right. right, can you boys. disagree that it was necessary to for the build up? Yeah. But I don't but think it didn't have the patience. Like the movie but if anyway, you didn't like, have the like, patience for the build up, then you wouldn't be someone who was like like we are, where it's like, oh my god, this movie was it was necessary. Like yeah. you needed okay. to have the patience, you know. Yeah, like yeah, even so one of the like biggest series is right now. Even one of the biggest series in the in the world right now is which is the Game of Thrones. I've met many people who are like, "Well, I couldn't get past the first couple episodes." Okay, yeah, I, but I never once you I found it boring. There exactly, you <laughs> but once you get past those first couple episodes, guess what? Shit yeah. takes off. Exactly. So once you but get past way, like the first fifteen minutes of New Hope, New Hope, 
Dude, right, and you know, it, it's on a, 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 a listen. I think I think we can agree that it is on a different scale, and like this is anything. In my opinion, anything that we're going to criticize about a New Hope or the or Empire is basically just a nitpick, in my opinion. But yeah, I think it is, our, it is our obligation to pick this uh, I, I, list. It is our obligation to pick that nit. So um, the difference, but, the difference is the build up. Yeah, and uh, the Empire had the advantage of the New Hope. If the if the empire wasn't even there, then then the new hope will obviously be at the top. But the the difference is the build up. Sure, and, there and yeah, was, again, there... that's that's another thing that Empire has. Um, another thing that I want to mention, you know, just briefly, and again, just just another nitpick. But I feel like. Um, a new hope is kind of a little more the the movie, like just the way everything's done, the way everything feels just the a new hopes, a little bit more of a dated movie. Like it's a, it's a little cornier. It's a little hokier, you know, it's a, it's a little more of a, of a movie that kind of uh, tends to uh, be dated, you know, uh, versus uh, empire feels like a movie that is a little more timeless. Like just the way everything's done with the dialogue, and the, you know, that kind of thing. I know they are both timeless movies. Don't get me wrong, but I think I'd have to give the, the edge to the empire in that department because it has less of that you know little bits of corniness and hokiness than than uh, new hope has in my opinion so um yeah, would i be wrong in saying, saying would i be wrong in saying that would i be wrong and and john correct me because i know you're, you feel strong about this but would would i be wrong in saying that i feel like a new hope and empire strikes back stand on even playing fields uh, listen, I ranked Empire Strikes Back above New Hope. I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate. Like, I legitimately... No, I did too. Strong. I did I too, like but the, I'm thing. talking on the realistic standpoint. Like, I think that, I think that Empire is actually legitimately a little bit better of a movie. Like, over just taking yeah. everything into consideration. But I feel like if you were to look at the two movies as if they were, like, assuming... Uh, just every, look at look at everything about the movies and assume that they are two entirely separate franchises. I feel like A New Hope, standing on its own, would I would say it slightly edges out Empire. But just taking into consideration that Empire kind of fed into Return of the Jedi and had A New Hope coming before it, Empire just is it's the perfect sequel. And the fact that like when you also add in that most of the time sequels are kind of lackluster, and Empire just managed to one up its you know source material. When first of all, Star Wars, New Hope, or Star Wars, whatever you want to call it was again such a blockbuster hit and then empire did even better like it's just such an amazing task like it's like so, about where, so where we can you, agree you on you have an expectation of something being good and then it is even better right or if you have an expectation of like okay the sequel to this movie like you know the first movie was amazing it better damn well deliver and then it delivers and even more so and then let's not even talk about the fact or we're going to talk about the fact that empire took this franchise in an entirely different direction in the way that it ended on a dark note. It introduced all these crazy new characters like Lando, Boba Fett, Cloud City, all the bounty hunters, like, you know, the idea of so, the Rebel Base and the Imperial Walkers and just everything about this movie was just like, it, it just built, it was such a sequential, logical, sequential uh, step forward from A New Hope. But what I'm saying is if A New Hope didn't exist and Empire had to stand on its own, I feel like A New Hope would actually be the better movie. Yeah, I think that's kind of what you're both so, saying. So I, 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 so, I can well, definitely let, see let, that. Let's 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 all agree, mm-hmm. and I'm sure the fans will agree that these two movies were by far, out of all ten, the literal hardest to place. Probably, yeah. And one edged out the other, yep. but it can it can honestly go either way. Yeah, it could honestly go either way. Going back, I mean, with, yeah, going back to what I was saying, if we're we're talking about you know de- downfalls of the movie, uh, I I mentioned pretty much all my nitpicks with uh, a new hope. Literally the, the only, the literally the only nitpick I have with uh, the Empire Strikes Back is the incest kiss uh, with with Leia and Luke in the beginning of the movie, and like, oh, yeah. I can I can easily overlook that because of what a masterpiece this movie was. But she could have still kissed him on the cheek. That's my that's my thing. Okay, not to make a big deal out of nothing but my thing is this okay if you knew george lucas if you knew 
prior to this that at the end of this trilogy it was going to be revealed that Luke and Leia are brother and sister, why would you have them kiss each other on the mouth? And yes, I get it. It's Princess Leia trying to make Han Solo jealous, you know, which is fine. They want to slurp him, damn it. But it would, yeah, but it would have been, it would have had the same effect, it would have been the same thing, it just wouldn't have been weird or creepy if she would have just kissed him on the cheek, it oh, point proven, it would have been fine, it would have been great, you know, but like I said, all this all is just I picking say is, at this point. All I gotta say is, thank God, it, there was no tongue. Uh, yeah, that would have <laughs> been worse, but, um, but yeah, but literally, other, other, than, other than that, I will say this, other than that one nitpick like, about think, this movie, think the Empire... Perry, do you think Perry Fisher and Mark Hamill banged in real life? I don't know, and I don't. Yes, know. Yeah, whatever. I do. My, my I do point think, is, I my, do think they did. Listen, listen, listen. No, but my, everybody, you know, everybody says that Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher definitely bang. More than likely, that. No, that but one, I, I, but yeah, I, I do I, think, I think Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher got it on. I do. I do no, think, I think it happened. That, uh, I think that I think that uh, what, ha- what actually happened was uh, Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher just did it. And, uh, Mark Hamill watched. Oh God! Well, all right, we're, we're not going to we're not hey, going to trail off. On the adult content side. present uh, eighteen and up. Listen, it might have been a three way. <laughs> oh, you never know. God. You never know. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> so like, anyway, um, um, the, 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 listen, listen. The point I'm trying to make is aside, aside from all that. Um, I have to say that um, other than that one nitpick um, about this, uh, The Empire Strikes Back is pretty much a, a perfect movie, in my opinion. It has literally everything you could ever want out of watching a movie. And like you mentioned, John, it is such a logical uh, progression off of what the, the foundation that A New Hope laid for the franchise. Everything makes so much sense in this movie. Everything flows so well from the beginning um, on the uh, on Hoth with the, you know, the walkers appearing and all that kind of stuff to, um, you know, the chases in space, to uh, Luke seeking out Yoda for training, to everything that happened in Cloud City, to the saber duel between Luke and Vader, which was great. Like I said, um, oh, yeah. I, I know I, before I mentioned um, that I ranked... Um, that I ranked um, the saber duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin in Revenge of the Sith as my personal favorite saber duel, which it is. But the saber duel with Vader and Luke in this movie in Empire Strikes Back is a very, very, very close second to me. And I'm sure most or a lot of people would say that this is probably the best saber duel in... Um, Anakin's you know, terrible acting just makes that other saber duel like not as good. And like, okay, it can have all the fucking shit in the world and all of like the Hayden Christians Christian and cry face but like this move this saber bite first of all it was like the first legitimate saber battle that didn't look like two old fogies like stumbling around <laughs> well that's only because it was only the second saber battle of the entire series but yes right and just the way that it was the, i gotta say the the atmosphere of this fight and the way it was paced it's just like it's so superior to that fight between Obi Wan and Anakin. Like, like I feel like honestly that Obi Wan Anakin fight is like third place maybe because the Qui Gon and uh, the Qui Gon and Obi Wan versus Darth Maul in Phantom Menace is probably better. I feel like this, eh. that's a third place. But like I just feel like okay, you like it because it, it was really long and it had a lot of flippy shit and everything and whatever. But the storytelling in this fight, like to use a wrestling term, like the storytelling in this fight and the way, like when Luke gets in the tube and it's all dark and like after, like he loses Vader, right? And it's like, and you just hear Vader's breathing. like, And then you just see his lightsaber ignite. Like every single time I watch this, even though I've seen this movie probably like 10 times, I get chills every time I watch that scene. Like I do not feel anything close to that when I watch Obi Wan fighting cryy faced Hayden Christensen. <laughs> well, I mean, I I do I get your point definitely there. Um, you know, and maybe like, I think just just just, just, just that, from okay, like an action standpoint. I think it's maybe definitely more just... acrobatic display and more action in the Obi Wan and uh, Anakin fight, but this fight just has everything like it has like vader throwing stuff at it. it's like you really feel like luke is like actually like hopeless and he has no chance of beating vader like when you watch the fight because he looks like he's like striking and like swinging for his life and he is giving it everything he has and vader is and like going no easy on him that's what it looks like when you watch the fight right and it looks like luke has no prayer of even being able to freaking dent vader and then he like gets like a lucky shot off and you know he like grazes his shoulder yeah. right on the one shot and then vader gets like really pissed and, and you see like luke really has no chance yeah. and that's what makes this fight just so incredible is like the emotion and the storytelling and the, the pace of the fight and the fact that it has slow points and it's not just like full tilt like jumping and flipping and crying like the hayden christensen <laughs> yes versus, yes yes uh, no i i definitely i definitely, like, I definitely like understand and appreciate that fight, and, the, and this was fight is just so yeah. perfect 
Yeah, no, and like I said, I definitely, I can definitely agree with uh, those statements. I think maybe from a, you know, from an action standpoint, that's probably why the other one edges it out. But I think that great story, like I- ignoring the terrible acting of Hayden Christensen, which has been well covered in this, you know, in this. Um, I think that um, it really, um, you know, the storytelling was definitely there in that prior sa- saber fight with Anakin versus Obi Wan. Um, Actually, now that but- we bring it up, in a new hope. Mm-hmm. The, the fact that that uh, the Alec Guinness Obi Wan versus Vader fight was so like robotic is kind of one of the de- one of the bad points of the movie. Like yeah. that might be, that's that's kind of a small blemish. Yeah, I would agree with that too. We hadn't even considered that till this point, but I would I would definitely agree with that statement as well. That's another nitpick of the of the movie. Um, of the of a new hope, but um, going back to the Empire, yeah, and the and the final thing I want to note about Empire, aside from all that, you know, is is this movie did something you know that was kind of unheard of up until this point too that we already touched on before, and that's the bad guys, the win. Bad guys win, which is something that you don't see unless you're watching some terrible horror. Movie. Um, is just something that you what the heck is that? Whoever's doing that, can you turn that off? That would be that would be awesome. Um, you can get sued by Fox now. Yeah, you can get. We, we, we cannot have that because we're already way over time, and I'm trying to wrap things up here. But, um, but yeah. So, so um, like I was saying, um. the The fact that the bad guys win in this movie is just um is just unheard of you know up until this point and is just something that is just incredible you know the way everything's played out like you know luke loses his hand and he's bested by vader and and they they ha- got han frozen in carbonite and they ship him off to a uh, jabba's palace to be a, a wall hanging you know so it's like um you know the so the... watch this movie like if you watch this movie you'll realize that the, the one thing about empire why i think legitimately makes it one of, it's not just a really good sci-fi movie it's not just a really good star wars movie but what legitimately makes it one of if not the best movies of all time is there is not a wait this movie i would just look it up it's 124 minutes which is an hour and a half there is not a single wasted minute in the runtime of this movie. Like everything in this movie just flows and runs so well together. And if anything, the movie is too short. Like most movies, you feel like, okay. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, like even there. There you go. Yeah, so even no, there, I, I, I agree with you there. Like this that that's the other thing that makes this movie um so great is that it is just balls to the wall, you know, the entire the, time. Uh, but the but the thing is it like it's not only is it is it balls to the wall, but it also is like you feel like it has those slow moments that make the pacing of the movie just so perfect. Like yeah. even when I watch the TV and the TV and you see it, it's just like you can't help but like you can't it's almost like you can't look away because even if you though you know like all the beats and you know everything that's gonna happen you just can't look away because it's just such a it's just everything about it is so perfect yeah definitely is that yeah, yeah so if you if you wanna yeah it's not like no, you can turn that, that off that would be awesome um and then yeah if you got any if either of you guys have any final thoughts on uh empire or the uh, the list as a whole now would be your chance to uh, you know go through that because i think uh we're about to wrap things up pretty well i don't think mitch can even hear you at this point yeah i guess not. i think you've had like a whole bottle of vodka hey mitch can you hear me no okay um do you, do you have any final thoughts you want you want to throw out there about empire or the uh the list as a whole there the star wars list of movies as a whole i do i do i empire have might, might be my favorite movie ever yeah no i i would probably it is definitely in my top of top movies of all time honestly and that's the other thing is is i honestly can't say that about what all right <laughs> Yeah, they didn't need can you can you can you turn that off before my podcast movie. gets taken down by George Lucas? I know he'll do it. He'll do anything for a dollar. Um, yeah, we'll do it. Penny. But yeah, listen, listen. It's it is it is one of my favorite movies of all time. I can't say that honestly about um, about um, a new hope. Just and, and this is one other thing is the fact that I feel that I've seen a new hope so many times that that kind of detracts a little bit from from a new hope personally. Um, 
but yeah, so, um, you know, uh, but Empire, honestly, like, I haven't, it hasn't been overplayed, which is, a, I think, another strength to the movie. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I think that, um, you know, that is definitely a big plus for uh, Empire, so. Um, but yeah, so, uh, John, do you have any uh, closing thoughts you want to throw out there, since Mitch apparently just wants to, like, play, like, Vader versus Luke in the background instead of actually talking about the, the, the movie, which is what we were supposed to be doing, but, you know, um, this, this is why I say my not, this is, this is why I say my not-so-expert panel of, uh, movie critics, folks. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. You're ruining it. You're ruining the moment. This will be the moment. Right this now. is the right most now. important moment! It's not, it's, no. it's not. It's like, you killed my father! Yeah. The other thing is, was like how good that if you even look into the lore of this, did you ever see the video where um, Mel talks about like the lore of the whole thing? How they, they when they filmed the original scene, um, you know, he said, you know, can you turn that off, please? <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, Mitch. But can you turn that off? Yeah, that would be nice. This, you say, guys don't understand. This is this is the moment in, in in Empire where this is what concluded it for us. This is yeah. this is it. This is it. So just there is literally less than a minute of time where we can take here to actually evaluate what was able to create the rest of everything drunk. else. <laughs> I'm too drunk. I'm cutting you off. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, listen. Yeah. So I, I, I wasn't really like I, I my my goal okay, here wasn't to like play excerpts seconds, from man. the Star Wars movies. It was more along the lines yeah. of like talking about the Star Wars movies. But you know, uh, just, this is the effects of alcohol think... on the human mind, folks. But nonetheless, um, this is why Bernard's straight edge. I think yeah, sure. Um, listen, listen, straight edge or not, my point is the point where. Him and Vader fought. Yes. Okay, and it was an awesome battle. And Luke lost his hand, and and he ended up making the decision to. My my whole thing I've been saying about you this for Luke. is no, is foresight. Okay, it, it's it's the foresight. I, I I don't know if it's something that comes with the Force. It's not something that's necessarily explained. But Yoda, Vader, Luke have all made decisions based off of foresight. Luke, literally, after losing his hand, finding out Vader's his father, has just... He, he took a dot. A swan dot. Into... It was like Jeff Hardy tunnel. off the ladder at WrestleMania. Yeah, sure. Okay, and, and, just, and just... And just... Now, this goes back to Leia think about it this goes back to leia where she's in the millennium falcon with solo no and she's with uh, luke hanging with and chewy or with lando i'm sorry she's with lando and 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 because he's already been in carbonite but yep. she's with lando and luke's and, able to reach and, out to her and talk to her with the force and he's just he's yep. he's literally yep. just hanging and he's going all he's just doing leia 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 and she felt it. Yep. That's felt it moving. that's she, exactly, <laughs> and she knew exactly. But but here's the thing. That's it's her being not like he, it's not like she just heard him. She knew exactly where he was, yep. where to go, where to get him. Like it, the, the like like you guys said, this movie. The reason I was trying to point out the edge of this movie to. Uh, a new hope is is the edge of it is simply that yeah. where I feel like that's kind of where it just all came together, and that's kind of where every movie after this has been able to spawn off of. You know, uh, it, it's it, it, if I can pull up a video on YouTube, there's no copyright. It don't fucking matter. This is off of somebody saying. Well, I was, you know, I was kind hey, of joking when fun. I was I was kind of using uh, humor to, <laughs> to try and uh, keep people focused, but you know, nonetheless. Well, that's fine. Then, then <laughs> I won't. Then I won't plug in this guy's name. But my point is, you know, 
you have people putting up these individual scenes. Sure. But it's true. Like these are the scenes that made they, it. What it was. These are the, and, the, the and, pivotal and, scenes in the movies just, that define Star Wars. They, they, and that is that is true. They shaped, definitely. They didn't just right. shape to define Star Wars. They shaped pop culture and movies forever. One hundred percent. Exactly. And and that's my and point. Nothing, so. anything since Empire Strikes Back, and especially no other Star Wars movie since Empire or before, or possibly any movie, uh, Empire and New Hope specifically. Besides those two movies, they, in my opinion, probably had the biggest impact of all time of any of any movie. Any two and, movies. And, yeah, and little known of. fact, little known fact, um, the person that actually played Darth Vader uh, was wasn't. No. He wasn't the voice of Darth Vader. He Little had like known a, fact, I think everybody I just... knows that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody knows that. I thought you were going to give me the but, name but... of the guy who was actually in the Vader suit, because that I don't know. But, uh, but, yeah, but I oh, think everybody I, knows I that. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, that uh, but I was, couldn't give you that name. But, 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 but it's, it it's completely giant. irrelevant, because you have a different voice, you have a different... Well, everybody my, my, knows my, James. That's the funny the, the, thing is everybody knows James Earl Jones, who was the voice of Vader. Nobody, or no, mostly nobody knows the guy who was actually in the Vader suit because it didn't matter, you know. But okay, so but it does David matter. Charles David Charles Prowse, born July first, nineteen thirty-five, yes. who is that's still exactly, alive by the way at, at age eighty-three, and he damn, looks like he has exactly, a glass eye. That's <laughs> exactly who he was. Eye. Damn. He but even when he was in these movies, he was gray-haired, yeah. or should I say, white-haired. Yep. Fucking old, fucking. Yes. All of his lines had to be rerun. Sure. Like the, the 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 time that it took to actually perfect this movie and any movie with Vader in it. I mean, it's just it's incredible. So the fact that they've they've like you, like you said, John, that the you know these movies, this movie in particular, has kind of set a standard. You know, um, I just wanted to I just wanted to find say something else that I found a, a interesting fact that the guy who played Darth Vader in the suit was actually a bodybuilder, and I found a picture of him when he was younger, and he was actually pretty freaking jacked. Cool, <laughs> but he was actually it, a bodybuilder. When he, but when he was in the Vader suit, he wasn't. He was older. He wasn't so jacked anymore. Uh, he was in his forties. He was still pretty. He was still in pretty good shape, from what I see. But anyway. Uh, the thing, what I was going to say a couple minutes ago before Mitch, when Mitch was loudly playing the Luke Vader fight scene, was that the original reveal, what I think adds to the lore of this movie even cooler, is that the original reveal when he goes, no, I am your father. I saw an interview with Mark Hamill a couple of years ago where he actually talks about what the original reveal was supposed to be and what they actually played when they did the scene. The actual line was, he goes, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker says, Obi-Wan told me you killed my father. And then what Vader says is he goes, no, Obi-Wan killed your father. Really? That was the reveal. That was the reveal. And then afterwards, George Lucas like pulls uh, Mark Hamill aside and he goes, you know, we're actually going to dub over that line. Here's the real line. And the only people who knew about it were like the editor, George Lucas, and Mark Hamill were the only people who knew the actual reveal that Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father. Damn. I didn't even know that, to be honest with you. That's pretty interesting. And Mark Ham- and I know this has got to be true because Mark Hamill himself said this. <laughs> And I saw him say this in an interview. That's very interesting that I did not know that. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that's that's uh, pretty cool. And uh, you know, that's that, that's definitely one of the better decisions George Lucas has made. Because um, I think I think doing um, doing the other the other thing probably would have been a lot worse and a lot more confusing. Um, you know, I'm sure they could have found a ma- way to make it work. But um, although if you look at the canon, like Obi Wan pretty much did kill him. <laughs> so even, like, yeah, well, yeah, left him for dead. You know, um, but um, but yeah. So it's almost true, anyway. It, yeah, I was gonna say it, it is almost true. It is kind of almost, but but did they no, have a different. He meant plan? that more on a philosophical standpoint. He meant that more on like whatever it was potentially left of him as Anakin yeah. in yes. the moment where you see in, in the re- in the Revenge of the the Sith that Obi Wan, you know, when he fought him, he, he did. He 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 took away whatever was left of the human part of Anakin and yep. that's what created Vader. 
Pretty much, uh-huh. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good place to cut it. Um, I want to end on the note of, uh, I definitely agree. You guys both kind of said it, but I just want to restate it because I think that it's kind of a good way to end this whole thing. Um, is that um, I... I don't think there's ever been a movie or two movies for that matter um, that have had the impact on uh, not just on the sci-fi genre, not just on the action adventure genre of movies, but just on not even just on movies in general, but on just on culture, you know, in general, as these two movies have had, you know, on that. So I think that's, you know, I think that's why doing this list was worth doing and why, you know, we run so late with passionate opinions and all that kind of stuff, because, because the impact that these movies have had on, on everything is just so undeniable and so great. Um, but I think that's a good place to cut it. So um, I want to uh, thank uh, everybody again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy, and stay tuned for more new videos in the future. I also want to thank um, Mitchellonius and Johnny Reps, uh, my not-so-expert panel of uh, movie critics, for joining me once again to uh, hash everything out here, um, talk about this. Well, this is a not-so-expert channel, so that's why you need us. Exactly. I never, I never said I was an expert. I, I'm a uh, very uh, non-expert uh, operation here. But, um, but yeah, and uh, we will continue to have uh, more episodes of the Captain's Table in the future. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, new topics, old topics, new guests, old guests. Not nice, uh, John. Alike. Not nice. <laughs> hey. I was just being facetious. Hey, hey we're, maybe all, next we're, time we're all we'll we're, we're a low movie. budget operation here, just uh, shooting from the hip and uh, having some fun, you know. Um, maybe maybe we'll do the Star Trek movies. Probably not. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, do you want to watch all? Do you want to watch all thirteen of them? Not at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I so, guess I'll have to. Yeah, no, that's I, I'm gonna pass on that. I'm sure I can think of something. I mean, I, I I'd honestly rather watch all thirteen of them back to back than the Last Jedi again. <laughs> well, well, I, uh, I I hate to say that. I hate to say it, but I actually do think I agree with you there. But, um, but yeah, so uh, that's it, and we'll see you next time. Next.